football tradition, even in a downpour, Texas A&M is at the head of the class. The spirit of Aggieland from the core to Reveille to the 12th man make playing at Kyle Field a challenge for any visiting team. College Station, Texas for Big 12 football is tonight. The number seven ranked Texas A&M Aggies look to hold on to their lead in the South Division as they face off with the Oklahoma Sooners. And let's take a look at the South standings. The Aggies with a one game lead over Texas that is playing Oklahoma State right now. The game is tied and Texas is about to attempt a game winning field goal. And the Oklahoma Sooners currently next to last in the South standings at one and four. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thulin. It is no secret that it has been a difficult year for the Oklahoma Sooner football program and especially head coach John Blake. What is unfortunate about the situation is that it has overshadowed a number of great performances by a couple of Oklahoma Sooner players. Joining me once again, my broadcast partner, Artie Gigantino, and it is unfortunate because these two guys are having a tremendous year. Yeah, and the one guy, Damon Parker, who's the tailback for this Oklahoma team, has averaged over 100 yards per game this year. Look for him to get the football 25 or 30 times tonight. He can make things happen. On the other side of the ball is arguably the best defensive lineman in the Big 12. Kelly Gregg, the Regis OU team in tackle. He is clearly a great football player, and he's going to have to have a big night tonight to stop this Texas A&M running attack, which is going to run right at him. Well, Brandon Stewart will be starting a quarterback for Texas A&M for the injured Randy McCowan. McCowan is available, but not expected to play. But there is a new star that has emerged for the A&M offense, and he's a true freshman. He's a true freshman, and he'll be the Big 12 freshman of the year, Jamar Toon. He's 260 pounds, and he's just 260 pounds of energy. This guy averages almost six yards per carry. Now, the one thing he has done for this Texas A&M offense he is taking the pressure off the tailback and the quarterback because he's a big guy that can go the distance. And tonight, when you hear the crowd go two, 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 that means they're cheering for him. They're not booing <laughs> for him. He's a fun guy to be around. Well, the offensive line of AM has improved so much that it has opened big holes for Tombs. Can Samisi Hamuli and the rest of the offensive line find success against Oklahoma? We'll step aside when we return. It's the Aggies and the Sooners from College Station on the field tonight and with more on the defense here's our Eric Clemens all right Ron I tell you what we've heard an awful lot about Dat Wynn and the A&M wrecking crew on defense but statistically speaking Oklahoma's defense is comparable check out the numbers and you'll see what I mean OU allows about 28 more yards per game against the run but about 16 yards less per game against the pass Texas A&M's defense total defense ranks sixth nationally OU's total defense is eighth the only reason they allow about eight points more per game is because head coach John Blake has had to deal with numerous mistakes on the offensive side of the football the whole year long and already for him to have some success today his offense simply can't make that many mistakes absolutely turnovers and penalties have killed this Oklahoma offense and you know sometimes Eric the defense causes it and one thing that Texas A&M will do they'll cause you to make mistakes well Texas A&M won the toss and they have deferred Ron Parker and Michael Thornton set to return the kick and it'll be Thornton in the end zone and Parker says don't you dare come out and the Oklahoma Sooners will take over first and ten from their own 20 yard line last week versus Iowa State that man Jack Sills Jake Sills was the first OU quarterback since October of 97 to play a full game was listed as a free safety during the spring drills and on the line it is Steven they call him Bubba Burcham the MVP of that offensive line the former walk-on and at the running back spot it is Damon Parker 153 yards away from his third consecutive 1,000 yard history he would be the first in Oklahoma history to do that it is raining again at College Station we're glad you're with us tonight Seth Luttrell the lone fullback and he is going to be stuffed by the wrecking crew defense and as he Line up that AM defense ranks in the top 15 in four different categories. And on the defensive line for Texas AM, Rocky Bernard is going to be anchoring one of the defensive end spots, a true sophomore. AM rotates eight in that defensive line. And in the linebacker spot, Roylin Bradley, a sophomore, not much publicity, but he's second in the team in sacks. And in the secondary, keep an eye on Jason Webster, the leader in the secondary and the best cover guy. The fog that you see is smoke from a cannon that they blew off. And to be very honest with you, we cannot even see the field from the press box. 
So we're going to try to have to guess. That's a better shot right there. Parker the eye back, and he will have the football straight ahead. Not much you can hear the pads popping. Once again, that smoke from a cannon. And you know, I've never seen that kind of smoke before. We've been here a lot of times, and that's the most smoke we've ever seen. But you know, this A&M defense is full of smoke because they make plays, and they make plays in the backfield. And you're going to see Cornelius Anthony, 46, come up the field, penetrate into the backfield, and stop Parker. Look for a lot of big plays tonight, Ron, by this A&M defense. Third down and six for Oklahoma. Last week, A&M held Oklahoma State 0 for 12 on third down occasions. Sills, a little play action, buying some time, and he is going to slip. Warwick Coleman came from that linebacker spot to put the pressure on, and the Sooners are going to be forced to kick it away. The Oklahoma coaching staff wants to get Sills out of the pocket tonight by having movement-type passes. John Blake feels that's his best opportunity to be successful on third down. And the Sooners are going to be forced to kick it. Jeff Ferguson has got great hang time as a kicker. He's currently number five in the NCAA in net punting. Standing on his own two-yard line. Good snap. High kick. Right at the 35-yard line. Running room. Look out. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Jason Webster with the punt return, the first of the year for Texas A&M. Now A&M's got two deep guys back here because of the weather conditions, which is very smart. The kick goes off to the right, Webster comes across the field, all he's got to beat is Ferguson, the punter, and he runs right by him. A&M wins with the kicking game and defense, and there's a great example of it. And the extra point is good, and it didn't take Texas A&M long. One play, a kick, and Jeff Webster returns the punt for a touchdown. Well, you know, Ron, what you've got to do, you've got to adjust your kicking philosophy when it's wet out. And that time, Texas A&M put two deep players back. Chris Taylor and Jason Webster were both like, you see right here, here's Webster, here's old Taylor over here. And what that does, that ensures the fact that the ball is kicked to the side, that it will not bounce and take up hidden yardage. Good strategy that time, but obviously a great job of running by Webster. And here's the punter now. What the punter's got to do is Ferguson, he's got to try to get him to one side. He's got to make him go to the sidelines. That's why you got to have those punters and those kickoff guys in tackling drills once in a while. Well, not a good start for the Sooners. A great start for R.C. Slocum of the Texas A&M Aggies. And once again, the cannon's been shot off. And once again, the field is covered. When did they start doing this? I, I tell you, it must be because of the rain and the cold weather. I've never seen it hover over the field like this. Well, there's a happy R.C. Slocum and Bill Johnson, the defensive line coach, who helps coach these special teams. And Oklahoma meeting on the sideline. John Blake is not brought up. That's part of the core. That is the cannon. You can see the rain coming down. You don't want to be in front of that bad boy when it goes off. Uh -oh. <laughs> you need that cannon to help defend the country someday. That's a big old sucker, isn't it? Oh, I tell you. Now well, the kickoff team is off to the side. There's nobody out there. Let's see if they just run on. This is interesting. Support just going to wait. Now here they come on. The smoke is still trying to clear up. And now we're going to get ready. Shane Leckler set the kick away. Once again, Parker and Thornton back on the end line. 7-0, 12-38 left in the first quarter. Another great kick by Leckler with the win. And again, Oklahoma will have to take the lead. Well, let's update the South standings. It was a great game in Austin this evening as the Oklahoma State Cowboys took on the Texas Longhorns. And Texas wins it. They go to 5-1 in the conference, and they stay a game behind 
A&M is that showdown lose in the distance between the two. And you got to say right now, Matt has done the best job of turning a program around, maybe in the country, at the University of Texas. And we will have them next. It's netted over Texas A&M and Texas Tech going your way from Lubbock. And that is always a shootout between those two teams. First and 10, or own 20 for the Sooners. Shows to Jermon Fazan. Jermaine Fazan, the big fullback, tries right up the middle. Oklahoma wanted to run right at Texas A&M this evening. You know what happens a little bit when you look at Texas A&M's defense? You see an average of 260 pounds in the defensive line. You see little linebackers like Dat Wynn and Cornelius Anthony, both under six foot. And you say, hey, we can power them. But <laughs> when the game starts, these little guys can really run around and make you miss. And they make a lot of big plays. Hazan stays in the backfield. Two wide outs, one to the right, one to the left. Hazan again, and he is going to be stopped by the wrecking crew defense. They don't allow a whole lot of yards rushing, just a shade under 100. That's 13th best in the NCAA. Cornelius Anthony was on the stop. And 2.8 yards per crack. Now, Oklahoma this evening wanted to line up in two tight ends with one back a great deal. And here you're going to see Fazan start to the right, but he loses his footing as he goes to cut up the field. The footing here is very, very slippery tonight, even though it's a great surface. Now, the last three opponents have been held to under 250 total yards. Oklahoma trying to run it. It's third down. Still slips again and again. He's going to be dropped on third down. Roy Lynn Bradley from that outside linebacker spot, the sophomore out of Lamar, Texas, with his first sack of the evening, the fifth of the year. And that was a great athletic play that time by Roy Lynn. And R.C. Slocum strongly believes when you recruit linebackers, you recruit speed and you recruit athletes. Now Chris Taylor set to receive this kick, standing at his own 43-yard line. Again, Ferguson, his first punt, 40 yards. It was returned 55 for a touchdown by Webster. A low line drive kick could be returnable. Taylor heads to his left. White jerseys surround him. He gets into Sooner territory to the 48-yard line. 35 yards on the kick, five on the return. 10-25 left to play in the first quarter, and the Oklahoma Sooners trail the Aggies of AM by a touchdown. The big true freshman fullback, all 200 plus pounds, closer to 260. Hall and Toombs in the backfield. This Cole goes in motion. Dante Hall straight ahead, not much running room, may have picked up a half a yard. All well, that Texas A&M offense has been hampered by injuries, but they've been able to get the big plays. Brandon Stewart started the first four games. He replaced Randy McCown last week versus Oklahoma State. The offensive line led by Hamuli. He's going to have to contain Kelly Gregg of that Oklahoma Sooner defense. And, of course, at the running back spot, it is Toombs, a true freshman, and he's been averaging six yards a carry over the last four games. Second down, we'll call it nine. All in about the Sooner 47-yard line. Stewart. He's going to be flushed out of the pocket. Gets away from one, loses the football, gets it back again. Ante Jones, the sophomore out of Homestead, Florida, number 11. He's the one who put the pressure on and almost came up with a fumble. And let's take a look at that Sooner defense, number eight in the NCAA, thanks to Rex Ryan, the defensive coordinator. Kelly Gregg, he's a good one. Tops the Big 12 defensive lineman in tackles. And at the linebacker spot, the man who just made the play, Jones tied Brian Bosworth's record for tackles for a loss. And in the secondary, Corey Ivey at right quarterback, number two in the Big 12 with four interceptions. And here's an example of the speed of this Oklahoma defense. As you see number 11, Ante Jones, come out of nowhere, knock the ball loose, and almost come up with it. When you look at this Oklahoma defense tonight, you see excellent athletes, an excellent scheme, and a lot of speed. Now the rain is coming down, and Brandon Stewart's going to call a timeout. Facing third down and 17, ball back at the 45-yard line. With 8.57 left to play in the first, we'll also take a timeout. A&M leads it 7-0 thanks to a 55-yard punt return. We different, gotta, yeah, different. Different, there you go. Third down and 17, Oklahoma bouncing around on the line of scrimmage. Stewart dumps it off underneath. Jamar Toombs still on his feet up to about the 42-yard line. 
but it'll be short of the first down. But still, we saw the versatility of that big guy. He's got some pretty good hands, but how about this? Michigan State has defeated the top-ranked team in the country. Well, so much for the computer grades and the rankings yeah. and the BCS and all those things because, you know, you, you still got to play games. Now Kansas State, that'll move them up in the rankings. On fourth down and three, Texas A&M is going for it. They are 12 of 14 this year on fourth down. The option. Stewart is going to be dragged down from behind. Great play by that Oklahoma defense. That was an example of what we talked about in the open with Kelly Gregg. Now, you're going to see Oklahoma audible to an option to the short side. They're lined up in a unbalanced side, but Gregg, number 97, penetrates the line of scrimmage, comes across, and makes the play in the backfield. I think R.C. Slocum made the right decision in this weather to go for it, but you got to consider maybe running away from this guy because he is too dangerous and he's having such a great year. You know, the Oklahoma coach is telling us he's been doubled and triple teamed the whole year, and he still leads the team in tackles. Parker is going to be tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Of course, it is that win number nine, one of the finalists for the Lombardi Award announced earlier today. The senior out of Rockport, Texas, averages just about 10 and a half yards a tackle, and you can see he leads the team in tackles again this year. Yeah, next week he'll be announced as a finalist for the Butkus Award also, given to the top linebacker in the country. And I really believe he should win at least one of those awards. He's an outstanding young man and a great player. Second and 13, the Sooners straight ahead. And again, it is Damon Parker, Cornelius Anthony brings him down. Just a reminder to stay tuned to FX after college football. In the East is Sandra Bernhard, guest stars on Insta. Parker, the junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the numbers in the last four games, big game against Oklahoma State. Third and six. Oklahoma trying a little trickery with Chris Blocker. Pass is incomplete, and the Sooners looking at fourth down. Well, again, another example of the, the wet surface here because Blocker just fell down. He might have been able to convert that on to a first down if he had not slipped. I think it's a good job by Sills of getting the ball out to him, but he did fall down. Boy, I tell you, it is raining. It has gotten cold. Chris Taylor and Webster are back to receive the kick. Webster on the far side. Ferguson, 37.5 tonight so far. And they're kicking the Webster, but they're going to let it go. No, he's going to fair catch it right at the 18-yard line. 36 yards on the kick, but it backs up Texas A&M. to play in the first. The snap was wobbly. Ferguson was able to get it. Sooners trail. First A&M leads 7-0. R.C. Slocum celebrating his 54th birthday today. Winning his coach in A&M history. Penalty flag is thrown as Sir Parker tries the right side. Not much running room again. That Oklahoma defense, I think the great comment was Rex Ryan saying, our players get off the bus, people say, my goodness, they're small. <laughs> yeah, but they're fast and they're athletic, and I think he's done a good job of putting them in the correct scheme. Obviously, this penalty going to go against a &M. It's holding by the offense. Half a distance from the spot. Replay first down. Now let's take a look at the scouting report for Texas A&M. Well, the big thing tonight was for them to overcome injuries, number one, at the quarterback position. Number two, to make big plays, especially against this OU defense. And they already have with the big punt return. And the number three thing that the A&M defense has got to do tonight is make the Oklahoma quarterback, Jake Sills, beat him. Stop Parker, make the quarterback beat you. Parker and Toombs in the backfield. First down and 20. They give it to the big fullback and nothing doing. He's going to be stacked up by the defensive line of the Oklahoma Sooners. Oklahoma's defense, don't have, they don't really have a whole lot of depth already because they've been hit with a lot of injuries also. And they've had some young players really do a great job of stepping up to the plate. 
Not only is Kelly Gregg a great player, but this guy is also Cornelius Burton. He's a surprise to these coaches, but he's a giant. I saw him the other day, six foot five. He's 274 pounds. And John Blake coaches the yeah. defensive line. Very few head coaches in the country coach a position other than quarterbacks. On second down and 19, the Aggies try the right side and not much running room for Dante Hall. Well, the bowl championship series coming into today, Ohio State had a pretty good lead over Tennessee, but with Ohio State's upset at the hands of Michigan State, that should change. Well, to me right now, the best two teams out there are number two, Tennessee, and number four, Kansas State. I think it's going to be real interesting to, have to see how this whole thing unfolds. Today, Kansas State won. UCLA has Oregon State. There's a lot of football left to be played this year. Especially for Kansas State, you have Nebraska, obviously, next week in Manhattan, then you end up in Missouri. Yeah, those are two tough ones. Third down, and just about 13, I think it is, they're calling it. Stewart looking to buy some time. Holds out, pass is complete, it'll be short of the first down. They'll mark it at the 27-yard line. Chris Cole with his 27th reception of the year, did not have a catch last week versus Oklahoma State. And Texas A&M will be forced to kick it away. You look at Cole, though, you love his average. That's a lot of yardage per catch. And at the beginning of the year, he was a pleasant surprise for them. But like you said, Oklahoma State did a nice job last week of taking him, the guy whose name is Hollywood, out yeah. of the game. Hollywood Cole. you got to love it. Shane Leckler, number nine in the NCAA. That was a pickup of 16, two yards short. Darrell Jackson from his 21. Dancing around, not much going, gets up to the 28, and a penalty flag will be thrown. 42 yards on the kick, eight on the return. But we do have a flag, and where it was thrown, you'd have to think it's holding against the Sooners. Well, we have two flags. There's also one thrown all the way back at the 30-yard line. The one on the 30-yard line looks like a defensive player might have lined up offsides. Well, we're going to probably try the whole thing again. Let's see what referee John Lewis says. You know, when, when it's an illegal procedure against the punt team, it's usually not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Now they're talking to Oklahoma, and Oklahoma looks like uh, they want to move the football. Not talking to anybody in an A&M jersey. Rich Cody moving up. Trying to listen. Two fouls occurred on the play. On the kicking team, illegal formation, not enough men on line of scrimmage. On the receiving team, illegal block in the back above the waist. The penalty has been declined. Offset, replay fourth down. Well, so we'll try the whole thing again. Well, next week on Fox Sports Nets College Football Saturday, Sean King leads the green wave of Tulane. Percy Slocum, whose team is not penalized very much. On the other hand, Oklahoma has 93 penalties going into the game. Last year, they set a Big 12 record for penalties with 112. And they're, 110. Going, to, they're going to shatter that record this year if they keep going the way they are. Jackson standing on his own 35-yard line to receive Leckler's punt. Low snap. Leckler gets it away. It's a line drive. Jackson from the 40. To the 45, down to the 40, still on his feet, falls 39-yard line. A kick of 38, the return of 21, and the scouting report for John Blake and the Sooners. One, the major thing they've got to do tonight is reduce turnovers and penalties without giving it a number. They can't turn the ball over, and they can't be penalized. On third down, they want to avoid long yardage situations against the Zane M wrecking crew. And lastly, they've got to get productivity out of the quarterback position. Those all involve the offense because the defense this year for Oklahoma has played so well. The Sooners have used five quarterbacks this year. Four different quarterbacks have started. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, Sills is the first one since last October that played an entire game without being yanked. From the eye, Oklahoma with good field position, and it is Parker. And he is going to be stuck. What a great defensive play by, again, Jason Webster, number 39, the junior out of Houston, Texas. Now, what Oklahoma did, they lined up with two tight ends on the line of scrimmage. 
As a result, Webster, who's going to line up outside over here, is a corner. He is in what we call cloud run support. He comes up the field. The fullback number 32, Fields, goes to block him. He comes off the play, comes off the block, and makes the play. Good job by Webster. A loss of seven on the play, and they keep it on the ground again. And once again, not a whole lot of running room for the Oklahoma Sooners. But you see, this is what we talked about in the scouting report. Here it is, third and long again. Oklahoma is not suited to be successful in third and long because obviously third and long forces your on to throw the football. And Sills has only thrown 34 passes in the four games he has been at quarterback. This is his fourth game. But the Sooners do have the ability to throw the ball. They've got a couple of wide receivers that can catch it. But Sills facing third and 13. Looking in the flat. He's got Parker. But Parker has company. This is why Texas A&M's defense is one of the best in the country. It's difficult to run. It's difficult to throw against them. This is an example like that win right here is an All-American. He blitzes and then runs out here and makes the play on the ball on a screen thrown out to the outside. He comes on the blitz, doesn't get the sack, but just hustles, 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 and just makes a great play. That's called being an All-American right there. Hardy, we're not even out of the first quarter, and Jeff Ferguson is punting for the fourth. Taylor and Webster are back. And he gets his foot into it in the rain. Taylor at the 15. And he is going to be swarmed at about the 18-yard line. A 31-yard kick, four on the return. Do you get the feeling this is like two heavyweight fighters just trying to take big slugs at each other? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why a big play, when it's a battle of the defenses, a big play in the kicking game or one big play on offense ends up winning the game for you. And I, I'm, I'll be I'm surprised. Taylor didn't uh, fair catch that one. You get a good look here at that win. He's the heart and soul of this wrecking crew defense. And to me, that's just amazing. 25 career games with double-digit tackles. Dooms and Hall from the I formation. First and 10. Ball on the 18-yard line. Dante Hall sees the seam and takes advantage of it. Pick up of 11 and a first down. And he also gets a little divot in his helmet. The Texas A&M offense needs Dante Hall. This is a toss sweep to the right. He does a great job of seeing the hole, then getting up the field and making you miss. This guy is a shifty, shifty runner with excellent vision and excellent balance. Well, he had a shoulder stinger last week, only carried the ball three times against Oklahoma State, and then took off the pads. He got treatment this week, and he was close to 100%. First and 10 for Texas A&M. Ball. Dances his way over the 35 up to about the 38 yard line before Cornelius Burton brings him down. Talked about Samisi Hamuli, the right guard, in the matchup with Kelly Gregg and the rest of the defensive well, line of Oklahoma. Well, one of the big ones saying, watch these two guys go to battle right here. Hamuli against Kelly Gray. There doesn't get any better than this. Hamuli comes off, gets his pads down, keeps his feet moving, and he won that battle. That's called excellent pad level by an offensive guard getting under the defender. Second down and three for the Aggies. Again, it is Hall, tripped up, takes a big pop as he gets close to the 40. He'll be a yard short of the first down. Well, the offensive line is the biggest in the R.C. Slocum era. How about almost 300 pounds? And, you know, there's a young player here, Seth McKinney. These other four guys, Vincent, Hymuli, Spikes, and Tucker, are veteran guys. But I think the guy that's really come on is Seth McKinney. His brother Steve played here last year. He's now with the Saints. But he's smart. He's got excellent pad level. And he has been a real key to this offensive line this year. Third down and one. Down, Texas A&M in his twos. Right over McKinney.
talk about pad level, and that is what the AM coaches have been talking about, that McKinney's learning how to get lower and lower. What is it? And it's hard for young guys to learn it. And again, it's very simple. It's get underneath the pads of the defenders. Now watch all these guys from AM fire out and knock the Oklahoma Sooners backwards just enough to get the first down. Inside of a minute, first quarter, R.C. Slocum very successful here at Kyle Field, 52-5-1. Doesn't lose a whole lot here in College Station. Hall makes a couple of good whacks as he crosses the 45-yard line. You know, it's 5'8", 190 pounds. You wouldn't think he's that durable, but Hall is able to take a hit. Yeah, he is really put together. And when you first meet him, you don't realize how, how compact this guy is. And, you know, R.C. Slocum loves him as a player because of his passion for the game, but is also his toughness. And you have to be a tough guy to play running back in the Big 12 with all these great defenses. Final 14 seconds of the opening quarter. AM, a 55 yard punt return, the only scoring so far. Parker in motion. They keep it on the ground with Toombs, who keeps his feet moving up to the 50 yard line. And that'll be the final play of the opening quarter. So Jason Webster's 55 yard return on an Oklahoma punt have given the people that are braving the elements at College Station. Something to cheer about. After one, Texas A&M leads Oklahoma 7-0. A&M leading Oklahoma 7-0 as we begin the second quarter. And with the rainy conditions down here, how many dry balls do we have? Well, the Texas A&M ball boys tell me they brought 18 for the game. They'll use nine each half on a rotation. Oklahoma, we have reported, has brought only 12. So if it comes down to it, maybe A&M will win the dry ball battle, guys. Eric, that look is you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, I, I want you guys to come down and join oh, me. Oh, I don't think <laughs> no so. No chance, pal. Not a shot, baby. <laughs> no chance. Sir Parker in the backfield on third down and four. Yes. Stewart out in the flat. The ball is tipped and incomplete. Intended for Parker. Daryl Bright, the left defensive end, the sophomore out of Tulsa, Washington High School, tipped the football. Well, the total yards so far, how about 54 minus 11? Well, and then you throw that punt return on there, and that's very, very oh. significant, significant because right now, obviously, Oklahoma is having a very difficult time generating any type of offense. Shane Leckler set to kick it away. He's had a couple of fakes this year, as the timeout's going to be called by Oklahoma. He's faked a punt, and he's also faked as a holder on a field goal. And R.C. Slocum trying to shed that to the description of conservative this year. Well, you know, when you have a good defense and you have a good uh, uh, kicking game, you tend to be a little bit more conservative. But, you know, you were mentioning this to me, this to me in the hotel. Eric Clemens was also about when a defensive coach is the head coach, right. you have a tendency to say, hey, let's play great on defense, but you offensive guys win the game, <laughs> but don't mess it up for me. So... Well, let's compare the two offenses tonight, the Sooners and AM. And I think this is going to surprise a lot of people because they are pretty close in a lot of the numbers, except for the bottom one, and that's the big one. The big one is the turnovers, and the one that's not on there is the penalties, you know, as a football team. These two teams are very similar on offense and defense statistically, except for turnovers and except for penalties. But a lot of people around the country, because of the problems Oklahoma has had on offense, would not believe that grab until we showed it to them. And John Blake has had problems in the inconsistency. You can point to a number of factors. Different players being put in, different quarterbacks being in, different cadences. And, you know, at Oklahoma, they've had six coordinators on offense in the last 10 years. So the ability to establish an offensive rhythm like they had with the wishbone in the 70s and 80s has not been there. Now, if you're an offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, you rent your house. You don't buy it. Jackson's going to let this roll. Good job by Darrell Jackson. I think A&M thought he was going to catch it. Well, the Oklahoma offense does have some power, obviously, with DeMond Parker, and R.C. Slocum feels that this offense of Oklahoma has yeah, improved. DeMond Parker, who I think is one of the best running backs in the country. And they've had some injuries at quarterback. Uh, they've had, they've changed uh, philosophies a little bit on, on offense from the first part of the year. 
But I've seen them in the last uh, few weeks here settle in, and it looks like they're really on track and getting better each week offensively. And they're not getting better right now. First down and ten. They've already punted four times. And again, they try it right up the middle. Are you surprised that they continue to pound straight ahead? Well, that's what they do the best because what they're trying to do is get the ball into Thornton and Parker's hands. And again, I think they're going to be stubborn tonight and say we're going to keep pounding this smaller A&M defense because, Ron, if you get out on the perimeter and you try to make too many passing plays, you might create a disaster for yourself. We expected them to spread AM out a little bit more. So far, we haven't seen it. From the eye formation, second and six, Fields and Thornton in the backfield. And it is Thornton. Stacked up at about the 23 yard line, Ron Edwards, the nose guard, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, made this stop. Thornton made a nice job of getting his hands on that football. You know, he prevented the turnover here because the ball is pitched a little bit behind him. You got to give that guy a lead, and the little guy from Navajo Junior College out of Texas does a great job of coming back, getting the ball, and turning up the field. And this is only the seventh quarter. Now it's the really the ninth because he's played a quarter for Jake Sills, the quarterback. And the coach has even said he improved with his poise and confidence this week in practice. Jackson in motion on third down. Sills is going to put it up, lets it fly up to the 35-yard line, incomplete. Intended for Gerald Williams who was on the receiving end of a touchdown pass in the waning moments against Iowa State last week. Well, you know, you talked about it, that there are some explosive players playing wide receiver for OU, but you got to get the football to them. And, you know, going back to your comment, and you're right, the coaches did tell us they wanted to spread them out a little bit, but I think Oklahoma's not doing it because of the weather. And it is still raining here, and the temperature has dropped. The fifth punt already for Jeff Ferguson. Taylor and Webster again back. And it'll be Taylor at the 42-yard line. Stopping and no place to go. Gets up to the 45. 34 yards on the kick, four on the return, and the Aggies will take over first and ten. Both teams fighting the weather conditions along with each other. Ain't a lead. Tradition here at Kyle Field, everybody's standing on the far side, watching the game, standing up. The students get to do that. Doing the yell, following the five yell leaders of Texas A&M. You know, if they win the home game, the yell leaders have to jump into a duck pond or a fish pond. <laughs> and then never, they practice yelling and again. And never call them cheerleaders. No, they're, they're yell, yell leaders. leaders yeah. Yeah. But they got to jump in a pond, then they practice. Stewart. Nice fake, straight back, over the middle, pass is incomplete. Knocked away at the last second by the great name of Oklahoma, Pee Wee Woods. Well, Pee Wee got up. He's five foot eight, but he got up in the air and timed that perfectly. Pee Wee's out of Chicago, and he can jump. Comes over the top. Now, that's a big-time defensive backfield play. And Brandon Stewart said, oh, man, I was going for the home run like he did a week ago when he came in off the bench threw a 34-yard touchdown pass. That all yell leaders all wet. They don't need to jump in the no, pond tonight. He looks like he's already been there. <laughs> yeah. Second down and 10, Toombs and Hall in the backfield. Again, Stewart dumps it off the flat with Toombs, crosses the 50, gets into Oklahoma territory. I think this is the second week in a row we've seen, obviously, Toombs play. His hands are very impressive for a big guy. And you know what? And they're continuing to add more and more things into this offense for him to do. Ray Doris told me, the quarterback coach, he says, you know, we threw so much play action pass. We throw the wide outs and the tight ends so much. At the end of the year here, as we get ready to play the Missouris and the Texases and the Oklahomas, we've got to start throwing the ball to this young freshman. And he's proven, like you said, that he can catch. There's a Superman t-shirt and Superman <laughs> tattoo. He is Superman in my mind. Taylor is the quarterback. He has the football. Brandon Stewart was wide on the right. And Taylor runs for the first down. Stewart just sprinted way out to the right. Taylor's already had one rush for 61 yards and a touchdown. That happened versus Baylor. He gets the first down on that play. Well, a little trickery here because Stewart is lined up to our right. The ball comes back to Taylor. 
Good job of getting the snap. Toombs, number 28, throws a great block downfield. And even Brandon Stewart, number 7, is looking for somebody, too, to block. And watch Ohio Muley, number 62. He comes and he chop blocks, which is obviously legal, Kelly Gregg. That's good execution by everybody. Pickup of seven and a first down for Texas A&M. 11.58 left to play in the second. Pass is complete to Hyde. Maybe gets a yard and a half. Corey Ivey, the senior out of Moore, Oklahoma, got him wrapped up by the ankles and held on for dear life. Corey Ivey is one of the better defensive backs in the Big 12. Last week he was the defensive player of the week in the Big 12. He had two interceptions against Iowa State. He can really run. 5'10", about 182, but he is really a compact athlete that can run. Well, he has four interceptions on the year. That's the most for an Oklahoma Sooner since Larry Bush back in 95. Chris Taylor again in a quarterback. He's standing in the backfield. The exact same formation. Look out for the reverse. And Oklahoma doesn't buy any of it. Great play by Cornelius Burton. You talk about protecting your territory. He did just that. He came up the field and ran right into the reverse. But you got to like the idea that AM is trying to open it up a little bit. Now Bennett lines up as the right defensive end right here. Watch. He's going to come across the line of scrimmage. Taylor's going to go this way. And here. Now, what you try to do to tell a defensive end if you're coaching him, get up the field and stay home. Get as deep as the deepest back. And that's exactly exactly what the big guy from Houston does. I like the offensive imagination oh, yeah. though by a and A loss of nine, Stewart back at his original position, lets it fly in the right flat. Should have hit the cutoff man, intended for Aaron Oliver, son of former Major League Baseball player oh, Al Oliver, six. senior out of Arlington, Texas. You know, I like it when offenses do things like put the quarterback out there. I, I think it creates a little bit of confusion to a defense, especially if you've never done it before. Why not? Yeah. In a game like this. And they were practicing that the other day when we were at practice. And old Sly Fox R.C. Slocum, I asked him, are you going to use it in the game? And he said, maybe. <laughs> well, Leckler is back to kick it away. Jackson standing at his 10. Short kick. Jackson sees the bounce at the 20, and it was like a nine iron hit in the green. So the Oklahoma Sooners will take over with 10-17 left to play in the second, only a 27-yard punt as they had a great defensive effort on uh, this end around. Not over, there's a couple more games to play beside those type of things when the season ends. Parker wide to the left, Latrell the fullback to Parker. Dancing, you can see the turf may have had a little problem. That win was right on him, but picking up on that story that you know, John Blake, when he was hired, the press conference when they announced him said, we have given him a five-year contract because we think it's going to take five years to turn around this program. Well, it is going to take five years to turn around. He's 10-21 and 21 right now. He's done a good job of getting this football team to play hard. But at the University of Oklahoma, playing hard is not good enough in a lot of people's minds. They want to win every football game. And there was talk of Barry Switzer coming back. Coach Switzer said, don't offer it to me because I'm not taking it. He likes riding his Harley around. Latrell, the left side after he gets hit, maybe picks up a yard. Well, tune into FX tomorrow at 6 o'clock for Major Movie Sunday. It all kicks off with a mystery thriller off limits, followed by Robin Williams in Cadillac Man tomorrow night. On is that a funny movie? Bizarre. Is, is that Jim mean, Robbins. Does that is, mean funny? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's one of those movies at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's real <laughs> funny, but it's 6 down at 11 for Oklahoma. Nine minutes left to play in the first half. Sills rolling out, being chased. Pass into the hands again and dropped incomplete by Chris Blocker, the second one that he should have got. But the A&M defense again flexing their muscles and you can see Oklahoma not much success offensively. No, and they're not having any success on third down because they put themselves in long yardage situations. We talked about that on the scouting report that Oklahoma's offense does not function well on third and long. But that's very, very descriptive in terms of where this offense is right now. Jeff Ferguson is going to be the most tired man on the football field after tonight. Taylor and Webster set to receive the kick. Done a nice 
job for the special teams of AM this year, especially on kickoffs. Saw them last week against Oklahoma State. And it's going to be Taylor at the 39. Smothered at the 42 and dropped back at the 39. 41 yards on the kick, only three on the return. LFX gives you the power to program. Plus, I have nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't going to mention that little tidbit, but. Yeah, you and Eric love it. AM takes over, leading 7 0 after the punt return. Short pass is complete. Chris Cole with his second reception of the evening, the junior out of Orange, Texas. Brandon Stewart takes a hit here, but this is experience. He's been in games before, and that's a great job that time of rushing up the field by the OU defense. Stewart gets rid of the ball. Cole catches it. Excellent concentration, though, by the quarterback. Corey Ivy on the coverage. First and 10. Ball on 44. Already in Sooner territory. Long count by Stewart. Rolling. Complete into the flat to Chris Taylor. The young sophomore out of Madisonville, Texas, he's had eight touches coming into this game. Three have resulted in touchdowns. Pickup of 11 on that play. Uh, Brandon Stewart, of course, came here from Tennessee, shared playing time with Peyton Manning in their freshman year. And there was much written about this young man. He was going to be the savior, and I think the expectations already were a little bit high when he came to a Yeah, and you know what? He didn't have a great supporting cast around him like this offensive team does this year. But the best thing about him the job was taken away from him. He hung in there. He came in last week. He was the hero, and here he is starting again tonight. Stewart throwing again, and it's on the money again. Corey Ivey on the coverage, but Chris Cole, no, they're going to say, well, they're going to talk about it. It is complete. What a great reception by Cole. None last week, three tonight. Good form this time by Stewart. He looks for Cole, he sees him, he never takes his eyes off of him, and he delivers the ball. Cole runs away from the defender, and that was clearly a catch. One thing that Brandon Stewart does very well is his footwork, especially on fakes. This is a quarterback luxury here at AM, not a controversy, as offensive coordinator Steve Craythorpe has been telling us. On first and ten, Hall loses the football. Oklahoma's got it. Dante Hall with a spin move, but Ante Jones comes up with the ball. When you're a running back and you go to, when you get hit and you spin around, which is what Hall does here, you've got to protect the football because the football is exposed. Your body cannot protect it. Now you look at Oklahoma, they have not done a good job this year on the turnover takeaway ratio. AM is number two in the conference, Oklahoma is number 12, but Oklahoma is 109th in the country in that particular category also. And the skies already have opened up again as Oklahoma takes possession. Parker Danson gets hit from behind. Ronald Flemings on the stop. You know, that was a little bit of a delay that time in the backfield. One of the problems you have when you have a speedy defense, Cornelius Anthony is going to see the ball, but he over-pursues it a little bit. Speed sometimes gets hurt with counter and delay type plays just like that. But as a defensive coach, don't slow those defensive guys down. Parker tries to get outside and can't do it. We saw that last week. The Oklahoma State running backs, very good, Jamal Fives and Nathan Simmons. They could not get outside of this a and Well, no, and you have great guys like Rich Cody here, number 48, who do an excellent job of run support also. So you got fast guys inside that can chase it down, and you got tough guys like Rich Cody who can come up and really do a good job on run support. He even hits me. He does. He? He's a mean-looking guy. Warmer walk-on. Third down and four for the Sooners. Latrell and Parker, and it is Parker. Gets up to the 20, and he should be sure to the first down. Needed to get to the 21-yard line. You know, Ron, you made a great point before. The good news is for Oklahoma to take advantage of this A&M defense is to run delays and cutbacks. The bad news is tonight, because of the, the footing is so slippery, just like that time, Parker fell a little bit as he
the ball back. And you can see him sort of shaking his head like, I saw the hole, coach, just couldn't get there. <laughs> Ferguson again, another punt. This will be his seventh kick, and we're not even at halftime. Once again, Taylor and Webster back. This is going to be a low kick that Taylor will take at the 45. He is going to be dragged down from behind. 35 on the kick, but he lost two on the return. And with 5.59 left to play in the half, timeout with the Aggies leading the Sooners by a touchdown. 7-0, and Demond Parker just couldn't make the cut. You can see him slip on this play. This is one of the best fields in all of college football, but it's been raining hard. Eric Clemens, you're on the field. What's it like? Absolutely, guys. It's holding up pretty well considering the conditions, but they're very proud of their surface here, the grass surface. All the grass grown right here in Texas, an agronomist consulted grounds crew to keep it in great shape, guys. It's like a golf course out there. Stewart wasn't conservative the last time, not again. This time he's going to be dropped from behind by number 94, Ryan Fisher. You know, Ron, I think A&M is trying to loosen it up a little bit because they're having a difficult time running the football against this 46 defense. There's a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, and there's nowhere to really run the ball. R.C. Slocum and Ray Doerr, the quarterback coach, and Steve Craythorpe, the offensive coordinator, want to throw it more on first down to loosen up those defenses. Third sack of the evening already by the Oklahoma Sooners. Loss of six, second and 16. Final five and a half here in the second quarter. Stewart looks to run the option. He's going to be dragged down behind again by Fisher. You talked about the 46 defense. Obviously, everybody knows that it was Buddy Ryan back in 1978. In fact, it was the third game of 78. He was doodling around trying to come up with it. Doug Plank was 46. That's why he named it. But what do you need to have a good 46 defense? Well, number one, he got in a coach. Fans it, and obviously the Ryan boys both understand it. But I always felt if you ran a successful 46, you needed good defensive linemen. I think you can get by with average linebackers. Obviously, you need a couple cover corners, but you need those guys up front. And as you take a look at Rex there, he, you know, he's just like his dad, I think. You know, he really knows this 46, like his brother does over at Oklahoma State. Great defensive coaches, all three of them. A lot of the line of scrimmage, third and 15, the Sooners are coming. Stewart gets rid of it, and it's complete! A lot of running room for Matt Bumgarner, and he makes his way in the Sooner territory down to the 27. Matt Bumgarner with his first career touchdown reception last week comes up with a big play. When you blitz, now watch Stewart back here. He's going to get loose. When you blitz, you got to make the play. Bumgarner was up. He was the left, excuse me, he was in the right slot, left over here. He came that side of the field and made the play. But a, OU is, did a good job of blitzing, but you want to be able to make the play, obviously, in the backfield. It looked like Corey Ivey slipped on the coverage, too, and Bumgarner kind of hesitated. Well, that's what happens, though, when you're running around like that. You know, the chance of the DB to fall is high. Big third down play by Brandon Stewart and Matt Bumgarner. They keep it on the ground. Dante Hall trying the left side. Cornelius Burton on the stop. You know, we talked about AM having to make big plays because I don't think you're going to successfully drive against this team by running up in there every play. So you make a couple plays in the kicking game, you make a couple plays in the passing game. R.C. Slocum knows this is an important game. Does not want to overlook Oklahoma with Texas uh, coming up and also Missouri. This would be an easy game to forget about considering Oklahoma's record, but he knows that they are very talented. Second down and seven. Stewart up top again. Into the flat. Complete again. Touchdown. Texas A&M. Chris Cole with his fourth touchdown reception of the year. And once again, Corey Ivey was turned completely around. You know, that was a good throw this time by Brandon Stewart. But give Hollywood Chris Cole the credit for going up, getting the football, and then fighting his way into the end zone. That was a nice throw and catch that time, and another big play. 
Oh, what a great job by Brandon Stewart. The big third down play, the reception to Matt Bumgarner, then the touchdown to Chris Cole. And the extra point is no good. The cannon fires, the smoke will come back on the field, but not before they put the score up. You know, you were asking uh, about the 46 defense, and again, when you're playing as much man as, quote, the 46 requires you to do, you've got to have excellent football players that can cover for a long period of time playing corner. Well, you can see the smoke that comes uh, over the field. Now, there's some question whether or not the uh, extra point was good. The official said no. The scoreboard said yes. Let's take a look. I don't think it was any good. I don't either. From our viewpoint, it looks like it's off to the... No. It's off the right. right there, to the right. Yeah. Now watch the officials in the bottom of your screen. Well, watch the officials. No They're good. here. He goes, no good, no good. It is no good. So it is 13 to nothing. Texas A&M leading Oklahoma with 3.04. What a great drive, though, by Brandon Stewart. We saw him come in last week against Oklahoma State. First play, throws a touchdown. Tonight, throwing the ball well. Well, Stewart showing some mobility, makes somebody miss. He finds his receiver, Bumgarner, comes all the way back, throws across the field. Now watch Bumgarner. He sees he's going to get hit. He switches the ball to the other hand. Now that's very, very intelligent wide receiver play by Bumgarner. And here's the touchdown throw to Cole. He throws the ball up, and he knows it's a touchdown. That's it, Brandon. Be a little more excited now. There you go. Good. Well, he drove him 57 yards in five plays, took just under three minutes. <laughs> and again, you can't see anything. Smoke from the cannon, but what we do see is the Oklahoma Sooners trailing 13 to nothing. You know, I've got a theory. I think the rain keeps the smoke on the field. That's very good. How's like that? that? I like it. Well, it's pouring out there. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, the Oklahoma Sooners have had no first downs in this ball game. The A&M defense has been just this side of spectacular. And Thornton and Parker are standing back waiting for the smoke to clear and try to get the kickoff going. Leckler standing back just holding on to the ball. He is now the third team quarterback. They let him take some reps earlier this week because they weren't sure about Randy McCown. Right, and when we saw him in practice on Thursday, I gotta be very honest with you, Ronnie. You know, we made this comment amongst our group. He throws the ball really well, especially for a punter. And you know, he's a guy that could have been the third team quarterback all along here if he would have been serious about being the quarterback and not the punter. But he's an athlete. Thornton and Parker are back. And we will kick it away. High kick, and it will be Thornton at the 10. Up to the 50 or the 27 yard line, tripped up. And that's where Oklahoma will begin first and 10. Well, coming up at halftime, the Marriott Halftime Report. We'll take a look at the plays of the year, plus scores from around the country, including the big upset of the day and maybe the season, plus first half highlights of our game. Eric Clemens coming up on the Marriott Halftime Report in two minutes and 54 seconds, plus a commercial. Eighth possession for Oklahoma. They've already had seven punts. Boy, they need to get something on the board here to try to get this momentum switched around. Jackson in motion. Sills rolls out. Pass is complete, complete to Chris Blocker. Blocker has dropped a couple tonight that he should have caught. Picked up eight on that play. A&M looks like they'll make it 11 straight games in which they have led at halftime. Leads that they've been able to hold on to. Well, when you hold on to leads, that's called the coaching staff doing a good job of making the necessary adjustments at halftime, but also not allowing your football team to become complacent. Second down and two. The swarming, wrecking crew defense just collapse on Damon Parker. You know what I like about this defense? There's, there's one star, obviously, in that win. He's a guy that gets a lot of publicity. But everybody else around him, they play so well together as a defensive football team. Warwick Haldman is an outstanding linebacker, number 43. He might not make a lot of All-American teams, yeah. but this group of defenders will be very happy at the end of the year where they end up ranked in total defense. 
OU looking for their first first down. Parker not going to get it. First back since Billy Sims to get back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Tripped up. Last year didn't have a good game against AM. 20 carries, 49 yards, not doing much better tonight. One of the things AM does well is penetrate with their defensive linemen. Watch all these maroon hats come across the line of scrimmage. A backer hits it up in there, and that win. Webster comes off the corner. That's good blitzing that time by the linebacker in the corner, but also penetration by this young defensive line. You think about it, all three of the starters on defensive line for Texas A&M are sophomores, but even before DeMond Parker gets the handoff, they're just about in the backfield. And you know, a couple backups are redshirt freshmen, and another backup, Steve Young, is a sophomore, but RC and Bill Johnson, the defensive line coach believe as you talked about before rotating defensive linemen number one so that they're fresh but number two what you're doing you're saying hey if a guy gets hurt we've got a guy who's got some experience playing the game to go in there let's take a look at the big 12 north standings you saw the south standings kansas state with a one game lead over missouri those teams yet to play nebraska will play kansas state next week in manhattan colorado dropped a tough one today and Kansas a winner this afternoon. A lot of bowl teams this oh, year will oh, yeah. be representing the Big 12. A lot of really good football being played in this conference. You, know, you mentioned the depth in RC keeping guys fresh. He went to the Final Four in San Antonio this year. Saw what Tuffy Smith did at Kentucky. Said he they used to take out their best player, put another guy in. End of the game, the other team was worn out. He said, I realized I have to do that on defense. It also helps team morale because everybody's part of it. Taylor and Webster back again. Taylor backing up to the 28. Doing a little threat of stare. Fumble, the ball is loose. And I think AM may have gotten it back. And they did. That would have been dangerous. <laughs> You know, you look at Texas A&M on defense, they have not allowed a first down in their last three quarters. Now, that is very, very impressive when you come to say we're shutting an offensive unit down. But I think R.C., again, he's a defensive coach. He was a defensive coordinator. He and Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator now, are on the same page, so to speak. And as long as this guy's the head coach here at A&M, they're going to have great defenses. Now there was a penalty on the play. They're going to push it back a couple of yards. What do you think about that? You talk about no first downs here and no first downs the last three quarters. In the second half against Oklahoma State, they only had uh, two first downs in the second half. The last two opponents that AM has faced have been scoreless in the second half. If you're Oklahoma, You've got to be concerned offensively, and John Blake has to be. Well, you know, he's got to make a play in the kicking game, or hopefully his defense can make a play and score. But, you know, we, as we all know, it's easier said than done. I think Oklahoma's playing hard tonight. I think they're playing smart tonight. They haven't been penalized. They're not turning the ball over on every snap. So I think this game is far from over because OU is playing extremely hard. Two fullbacks in the backfield. Toombs was in the eye formation at the tailback spot, and he can play tailback straight ahead as we close in, and one minute left to play in the half. Well, you know, he did in high school, and he wore number five in high school, and he said next year he wants to wear number five here at AM, and that's a big tailback. It's a big fullback as it is. We got to give this guy a name, Ron. I'll tell you, I, I don't know. He, he, there's got to be something out there. Number five, that five's going to stretch all over the place, won't it? The bus, that's somebody's already the bus. The big rumble or something. I like that. <laughs> the big man rumbling through. Now, now Toombs goes back to the fullback spot. Parker at tailback. Stewart is going to be dumped. That'll be the fourth sack of the first half for that Oklahoma defense. Kelly Gray comes up with a sack. He had had only one sack in the last five games, so he gets back in the sack department. You know, Rex Ryan said he's the energized bunny. You know, that commercial, he's a bunny that's energizing. He plays hard 100% each and every down. He's the state heavyweight wrestling champion in Oklahoma for three years in a row. He
in his final 58 matches. And look at number 97. It's a stunt that time that allows him to come clean, but he comes clean and he makes the play. I love wrestlers that are defensive linemen. I was going to ask you about that because there have been in the past wrestlers that have become defensive linemen. And you talk about a low center of gravity and balance. I think wrestlers have it. And you know what else they have? Great upper body strength. Because in wrestling, obviously, you got to use your shoulders and your arms. And that's what a defensive lineman must use. Well, Oklahoma has pushed AM to a third down and 15 situation with 32 seconds left to play in the half. If you're R.C. Slocum, are you very conservative since you're deep in your own territory? Yes. <laughs> yes. R.C. Slocum wants a very big birthday present tonight. That would be a victory. I hope I look that good when I'm 54. 54 and a coach, that's what in, in human life. <laughs> <laughs> About 75. <laughs> yeah, right. And he can still smile. We appreciate everything RC's done for us when we make our trips to College Station. One of the most personable coaches you'll ever run across. Timeouts remaining. Each have one, and they're going to call another timeout. Back-to-back -back timeouts. You know, you look at RC, and you, you know, he's had four offensive coordinators now here at A&M in six years. This program has not missed a beat. I think he's hired a great staff. He's got guys like Ray Dorr, the quarterback coach, Steve Craigthorpe the offensive coordinator, Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator. He's had great people work for him. Bob Davey, the head coach at Notre Dame. Bob Toledo, the, the head coach at UCLA. Tommy Tuberville, the head coach at Mississippi. All worked here for R.C. Slope. And he likes the month of November. Well, he should. He should because at number one, it's his birthday month. Yeah. But number two, he's like 29 and two in the month of November. The one thing though, Ron, he doesn't like is this one right here. He's three and eight mm. in December and January. But that is very impressive in terms of a one loss record. The pride of Orange, Texas. Played his college football at the police state as a tight end and a linebacker. He's very switcher, believe it or not. Won more games in his first seven years. Chris Taylor again at quarterback. This is the third time he's done it, and he's going to run the option. Keeps it. Looking for the first down, and he is going to be close over the 20. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Timeout's going to be called by Oklahoma because with 24 seconds left in the half, they will get the football back. Interesting that Taylor has done this so many times this evening. Well, you know, I think it takes, number one, the pressure off of Brandon Stewart a little bit. And obviously the A&M coaches felt that Oklahoma was not aligning to it properly or else they wouldn't come back to it because you put that in the trick category. But you know what else, Ron? It's fun, it's fun for the players. Oh, yeah. You know, and different guys line up as long as it's sound. I think it's fun for the players, and they really like doing different things, especially at this time of the year. Does it feel like this final minute is going like about an hour? That's because it has been, especially <laughs> the rate of the first quarter. I mean, that thing went by quite fast. Now we've got another timeout. The trainers are out. Shane Leckler, number nine in the NCAA, first in the Big 12 in punting. Good move, though, by Rex Lyon and, and John Blake here. Put the pressure on Texas A&M. Hey, you might fumble the snap. You might block the kick, especially in this field position where they are right now, and especially with this weather the way it is. So I think that's heads up by John Blake and Rex Ryan here of forcing A&M to a punt the ball. Now, Jarrell Jackson coming into tonight, 89 punts he fielded, only caught, called for a fair catch on seven occasions. Looking to run this one back. The Sooners come after it, Leckler gets it away, and Jackson will have a chance to return it. Penalty flag, that's the halo rule. That was very, very obvious. Texas A&M's Michael Jamison, number one, got right in front of Jarrell Jackson's face. Now, we've talked about that rule before. I think it's a good rule because it's for safety in college football. You've got to give the return man six feet, two yards, in order to catch the football. John Lewis, one of the veteran officials in Big 12. Had a chance to listen to him in July, do a little coaching clinic and a little refereeing clinic. And boy, I tell you what, he is one smart man. Talking it over with the Sooners, 16 seconds left in the half. The big play so far, 55-yard punt return by Jason Webster. The foul. Two-yard violation. 
of the receiving kicking team, of the kicking team, first down. The Sooners pick up a little bit of yardage, maybe time for two plays. Well, obviously, you try to air it out here, and you try to take the ball and throw it down the field. And here's something for John Blake that he's going to be very happy with. Oh, yeah. No penalties tonight, at least none that have been accepted. Ahmed Kaba goes wide to the left. 15 seconds, Sills over the middle, pass is complete. Jason Freeman, the tight end, the senior out of Muskogee, Oklahoma, with a reception. And the clock is moving, and Oklahoma may not get off another play. They're out of timeouts, and they won't. Didn't get the first down, the clock kept going. And that's the way the first half will end. Jason Webster, a 55-yard punt return. Gave Texas A&M a 7-0 lead. And, Artie, I tell you, Oklahoma did everything they had to do on defense. Their offense needs to get kick-started. Well, absolutely. But both teams, you got to say, as we talked about at the beginning of the game, playing superior defense. And I'll tell you, the, the team that scores on a big play or two in the second half will win this football game because this is not going to be an offensive shootout here. For the 11th consecutive game, Texas A&M has the lead in intermission. 13-0 is our halftime score. The Marriott Halftime Report is straight ahead. Let me tell you, because he said exactly the same thing. He said exactly the same thing. We need to get more offense going. We had holes there in the offensive line. Our backs just couldn't hit them. Of course, the wet conditions have something to do with that. We'll see if they can get any offense going at all here in the second half, guys. More offense probably is not the word. Any offense would probably be the word. And it doesn't help now, too, that AM will start off with the football. And the Sooners are just going to ground this kick. It is Chris Taylor. Had the big kickoff last week against Oklahoma State. Gets up to the 27 yard line, and that's where AM will take over. You know, I've always said this, Ron, that the most important drive of the second half is the first one because you come out and you make a statement as you look at Chris Taylor come off the field. But you know what? This guy's become the MVP of this football team. He does more than return kicks. He catches passes, and tonight they've added a new element with the play quarterback. So he does a lot of things for this football team. Now the Texas A&M Aggies looking for their ninth consecutive victory after opening the season with a tough loss to Florida State. This team has improved every week. Toombs and Hall in the backfield. Stewart puts it up. Incomplete, intended for Leroy Hodge, the junior out of Rosenberg, Texas. And once again, the cannon is fired, and we've got the uh, eerie effect. <laughs> now, I'd say it's off the lake, but there is no lake here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're at Cleveland Stadium. Yeah, isn't it? right. Yeah, it's, it's the outer limits. Look, that's, the, that's what we look like from the uh, end zone camera. <laughs> We have a moment we'd like to thank our camera crew. The conditions here are uh, absolutely miserable, to say the least. And, guys, we really do appreciate your job uh, being out in the elements. And Eric Clemens, thank you, folks. And right there, that's what they have to go through. He is breathing, by the way. And there's no heaters up <laughs> there's there There's no either. heaters. And no coffee, so that's a no. tough assignment. And our engineers for keeping all the equipment working. Once again, stoppage of play. And you think after the second time they get the hint, and maybe the cannon's not a good idea tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I said, though, before is right. I think because of the rain and because of the clouds and because of the mist, it stays down. I mean, the, the, the what is that stuff called? Smoke? Smoke can't, can't leave the stadium. I, le I learned that in a science class once. Thank you, Mr. Science. Bill Nye with me this evening, folks. <laughs> You're probably right, though. I, I am right. Yeah. Trust me once. Tombs and Simpson in the backfield. Stewart from the shotgun on second and ten. Great drop into the flat, passes complete to Aaron Oliver. Aaron Oliver, the senior out of Arlington, Texas, had knee problems and had a very interesting surgery in the offseason. Already had one patella from a leg put into the other. I know it's amazing what they can do in terms of getting an athlete back on the field. And he's a good athlete. He's kind of had a slow year, but one of the reasons is there's six good wide receivers here at A&M, and not one guy has just jumped out. So Ray Dorr and Steve Craythorpe, the offense coordinator, they use them all. Third down and one. Twos. Barrels ahead. Look at him keep moving the feet, and he's got the first down. Boy, he is one exciting young man. You know, that's their jumbo offense. 
where they put three tight ends in the game and they put Toombs back at the tailback position. And what they're trying to do when they do that, as you see Spiller right here, number 87, they're trying to get as much beef as they can in the backfield. And that's a guy, when he gets going and he keeps those legs pumping, is very, very difficult to tackle. And I've said it before, and I know he's not having a big statistical night tonight, but I love him. I think he's going to be a star here at Texas A&M before he's done. We saw the rushing throwing a couple of receptions on that. Again, it is two. Side. Fights his way into Oklahoma territory down to the 35 before Ghana Joseph, the senior out of Miami, Florida, makes the stop. Pick up of 14 on the play. Cameron Spikes, number 73, got out in front of him. Right over here, he's going to come lead up the hole, make a good block. That's a good job again by the offensive line. But I love it. Cameron Spikes, 6'3", 310 pounds, leading for the guy who's 260. That's the longest rush for AM so far this evening. Toombs just barreling his way through. First and ten. Ball on the Sooner 46. Stewart, three-step drop. Little miscommunication with Sir Parker. But Stewart paid the price on that. One more time, Texas AM's offense going to a one-back set in an attempt to spread out this 46 defense from Oklahoma. Spread them out to hopefully be able to create some soft spots inside to run the ball or throw some of the quick hitches. That time, as you said, a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. Second down and 10. Early on here in the third quarter. All in twos in the eye formation. Dante Hall. And he is going to be picked up, but not much gain. Most defenses, you wouldn't think, would get stronger as the game goes on. That's not the case with Oklahoma. No, they've played well all year and because of young guys like Rocky Kalmus. But you look at these statistics, they get better and better and better, especially in the fourth quarter. Which is conditioning. Yeah. I think it's adjustments by coaches. But it's also passion by your defensive players and saying, hey, we're not going to give up and we're going to continue to play hard no matter what the score. That's a great graph that illustrates what OU defense is about this year. They play hard the entire year no matter what the conditions. Third and 13, Stewart overthrowing his intended receiver, and that is Matt Bumgarner. And the Oklahoma defense stops. A&M on the first possession. Ante Jones, the linebacker, is down. Slow to get up. And he is gingerly walking off the field. And he is going to be helped off the field now by one of his teammates. Burton that time with some pressure up the field. And, you know, you look at this defensive line from Oklahoma, who's coached by John Blake, who's also the defensive line coach, as well as the head coach. You look at speed and athleticism. High booming kick by Leckler. Darrell Jackson doesn't call a fair catch very often, and he does there. Only his eighth fair catch of the year for Jackson after a punt of 31 yards. That's a wise decision that time. Talk about MVP. R.C. Slocum said Shane Leckler should be our MVP for what all he's done this year. Well, you know, R.C.'s a defensive coach, and defensive coaches want good punters and good kickoff guys. But this is perfect form in terms of kicking the ball. Excellent leg whip, and that's why he's going to make a lot of money someday as a punter on Sunday in the National Football League. Oklahoma is going to try to pound it away, running the football again. Seth Luttrell, the fullback. Father Jim Luttrell was a very good player for the Oklahoma Sooners. 74 and 75 national championship teams. Not too bad. He was a good hoss. You know, Luttrell last week had a good game against Iowa State because they ran him on a bunch of traps up inside from a single back, back set. But obviously, because of the weather tonight, they've gotten a little bit away from that. But Luttrell can carry the football, and I think he's dangerous if he gets a little room inside. Pick up of six, second and four. Luttrell looking for Oklahoma's first first down. Rocky Bernard from the left defensive end spot, the sophomore out of Baytown, Texas on the stop. And that is the original Okie from Muskogee, Seth Luttrell. His high school coach was Jason Freeman's dad, the tight end of Oklahoma. And Oklahoma has picked up their first first down of the game, and we are at the 11.35 mark of the third quarter. 
Maybe that's a sign. Well, it might be, and you've got to be patient now. It looks like they're trying to establish the run again here at the beginning of this second half. But keep doing it. From the eye, they keep it on the ground. Parker banging his way. Or Seth Latrell, we should say, up to the 30-yard line. Ron Edwards on the stop. One thing about this a and defense, they don't give up a lot of long plays. They've had only three plays of 20 yards or more in terms of the run game against them this year. One of the reasons is they play so much zone. So if a, def if a rusher breaks the line of scrimmage, there's a couple of guys, especially those safeties, sitting there. Sills playing it very safe so far this evening. Play action. Does he have the speed to get to the outside? And he does, up to the 35-yard line. That'll be about a yard short of the first down. Christian Rodriguez is the one who really tried to wrap things up. Now, if you want more information on the Big 12 website, all you have to do is type into your computer, www.big12sports.com, and you can get caught up with up-to-the-minute scores, updates, and championship information. Big12sports.com. Latrell and Fazan in the backfield. And it is Jermaine Fazan. Fazan started out two days a little rough as Oklahoma gets their second first down of not only this drive of the game, but he had his jaw broken by his own player, too. Yeah, six foot, 260. He's a big guy that they call Gumbo because he's from the New Orleans area, and I guess he likes to eat. Gumbo. <laughs> well, Gumbo. At 260. Yes. I'm calling him Mr. Gumbo or yeah. Sir Gumbo, whatever he wants. But he's a big guy. You know what? I'm surprised he hasn't played a little bit more tonight in terms of handling the football. Now it's Fazan and Fields in the backfield. Still looking for the quick pass. It is complete. A safe pass out in the flat to Jarrell Jackson. Jackson, a junior out of Houston Yates High School. No touchdowns receiving this year for Jackson, but he is a versatile player. He's even played a little tailback. You know what I like about him, though? He came into the game with a 17-yard average per reception, which is a whole lot. It goes back to the thing you mentioned, a lot of big play receivers at Oklahoma. If you can get him the football. Oklahoma showing their first life of the evening offensively. Fazan tripped up. By that win, fumble. Does AM have it? Yes. Just when we say the Sooners are showing some life, they have their first turnover of the ball game. That has been the story of the 1998 season for Oklahoma. Well, it's been the story for the last couple of years for the University of Oklahoma. Simple handoff inside. It's a blast play. Hassan gets up in there. It doesn't look like he had the ball completely under control. He hits the ground, and the ball pops out. The ball was coming out, it looked like, before he hit the ground. That wins second fumble recovery of the year. And the Aggies take over with good field position. They'll keep it on the ground. Toombs tough to bring down. You know, when you're in these conditions, you like big backs to carry the football because they're hard to tackle. They go straight ahead. They don't do a lot of dancing, and they usually hold on to the football. And that's what R.C. Slocum wants to do here is hand the ball off to the big guy because this is called violent running and yak. Yards after contact. There's a lot of contact on him, but he made a lot of yards, about five yards after the initial contact. He threw aside Rocky Kalmus and also Jeremy Wilson's guest. Again on his feet. Ante Jones finally brings down the true freshman out of Kilgore, Texas. Last year at this time, he was playing 3A high school football. This is a belly play. Now, you're going to see Toombs here. He's the fullback. He's going to get the ball here, and he's going to cut back. But watch the defense over-pursue there. It's a cut-back belly play. Excellent job of him, of Toombs, going north and south. But once again, he breaks a tackle there and makes a defender miss. First and 10 on the 29 for Texas A&M. Stewart looking for the big one. 
Incomplete. Penalty flags are thrown. More flags on the play. Intended for Matt Bumgarner. But Corey Ivey, who's been turned around a couple times tonight, this time commits the infraction. And he is talking it over with teammates. Well, it looked like the right call that time by the official because the ball was catchable and there the was foul. certainly contact. Pass interference by the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. We're going to see Stewart here now. Drop back. He sees Bumgarner. He waits. He puts the ball up. Now watch Ivy number nine with his left arm there. He clearly interferes with Bumgarner's ability to catch the ball. It's a good call by the official. You cannot do that because the ball was catchable. The fumble and then the penalty. Two big plays have hurt Oklahoma here in quarter number three. Boom, takes one right up the side of his head. Brandon Moore, the sophomore out of Freeport, New York, really lowered the boom on him, but Toombs still was able to pick up positive yards. You know, it's not the turnovers always that kills you or helps you, it's what you do with them. And if A&M can go in and score now after the turnover, they're doing something with the turnover. The numbers on Toombs, throwing a couple of receptions, and it's a full night for the freshman. It's a funny story he was telling us about the first time his mother came to a game here. She thought that everybody was booing him when they were going two, two, two. And he had to explain to her after the game, they're really cheering for him. This time, Dante Hall is going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Kelly Gregg, the senior out of Edmond, who had 17 tackles versus Colorado earlier this year on the stop. I asked John Blake who Kelly Gregg reminds him of, and he gave him the ultimate compliment. He said he reminds me of Russell Maryland when I coached him at the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, Russell Maryland even looks like Kelly Gregg. Shorter, 295 pounds. Hard playing, never stops going 100 miles an hour, and a guy you just love to have on your football team. Maryland now, obviously, with the Oakland Raiders. On third and 12, the Sooner defense needs a big stop. Showing blitz. Everybody's jumping around. The play clock was down to zero. Let's see if it was delay of game. A&M's moving backwards. Prior to the snap. False start nope, false by start, the but still go backwards. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. You get the credit on that penalty to Rex Ryan, the defensive coordinator, because the movement by the defense caused some indecision in Brandon Stewart. That's the bad news. But the good news is you have a little bit more room in which to throw mm -hmm. if you're going to throw the ball into the end zone. So sometimes penalties can work in your favor as we look at Rex Ryan to the left. And that's a zone coverage right there, Ron. You see that? Yep. That C? That looks like a zone coverage to me. Third down and 17 now. Ball on the 21. Stewart has time. Rifles the pass. And it is going to be incomplete. Intended for Leroy Hodge. The fans wanted a pass interference. It's not going to be called. Corey Ivey on the coverage. This time he's able to do his job. And, Ron, it was, it was a zone coverage. Look at the linebackers up in here. They're going to threat to come, but they don't come. Watch the secondary now. They're going to drop into a three deep. One, two, three. And Stewart's a little bit confused. There's nowhere to throw the football. A game of cat and mouse, a game of chess between the defensive coordinator that time and the quarterback. Now, Leckler is going to put the ball down. Russell Bynum set to kick the field goal. They spotted at the 27-yard line. It'll be a 37-yard kick. And maybe offsides. Penalty flags thrown. No play. You know, we saw the yell leaders there gathering around the goal post. And again, another tradition here at Texas A&M where they kneel down the and offense. they just hope that Five the ball goes through on PATs and down. field goals. Another one of the odd traditions here, I might add, but it's still a tradition. As long as they don't get another scoreboard and run it over to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? This is what college football's all oh, about. This is... You know, things like the dogs, things like kneeling around the goalpost. I think it's great. Now they're going to spot the ball at the 
33 yard line. It'll be a 43 yard field goal attempt for Bonham. This would be his longest of the year. Knuckleball, yes. Well, the kneeling and the hoping helped because that one just made it. Al Bynum gets his longest of the year. Knuckleballs it through, but AM continues to add to their lead. Texas with the number seven ranked Texas AM Aggies lead the Oklahoma Sooners 16 to nothing, 622 left in the third. Oklahoma driving in the third quarter, coughed up the football, then committed pass interference, and that led to a six play, 26 yard scoring drive by the Aggies. Bottom of the 43 yard field goal, and it's 16 to nothing. Thornton fumbling the ball around will take a knee. One thing that's great when you come to College Station is the atmosphere, and that is something that is special to even head coach R.C. Slocum. And then Friday night to have midnight yell stadium, there'll be 30, 40,000 uh, people in the stadium, and then that carries over, that enthusiasm carries over into the game, and on game day, it's just a loud, enthusiastic crowd. The core marches in before the game, and it's just a, the crowd really gets into it, and it's a great atmosphere. The yell leaders are voted into that position. Of course, yesterday they raised the poll as they begin to build their bonfire for the annual class of Texas. Parker, no place to go. Ron Edwards on the stop. Well, once uh, another tradition, of course, is the 12th man on the kickoff. And the 12th man on this kickoff got knocked around a little bit. And this is Drew Bridges. He's the guy this week that's the 12th man. Gets his pads down, but you got to get your hands in there and get rid of them. And what that tradition is, that tradition means one member of the 12th man group will run down on a kickoff each and every kickoff. I think it's great. First option, Parker takes a big time hit from Jason Webster. And he loses his balance and goes down. You know, Jackie Sherrill used to try to get all 12, all 11 yeah, guys. But you know what? I, I, you can't do that in football today because you can't have 10 walk-ons running down and try to cover kicks against some of the great players that return kicks. I thought it was a great idea. It, it didn't work, though. I think one or two guys is fine. Damon Parker obviously having a tough night right. with only 12 yards rushing. You don't have to be a math major to figure that one out. A loss of one, third and 11 for Oklahoma. Kaba in motion. Sill sets his feet, gets rushed, dumps it off to Parker. Side steps one defender and then gets dumped as he crosses the 20, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Scrimmage, Rocky Bernard on the stop. Eric Clemens is on the sideline, and Eric gets a tough night for that man right there. It certainly is a tough night for number 33. He set out OU's first possession of the second half simply out of frustration. The coaches tell me that he just can't get any traction out there on the field and is not real confident trying to run the football, but a credit to him, he did come back out on the field for their second possession and went nowhere. 12 carries for 12 yards, not the kind of night DeMond Parker thought he'd have, guys. Ferguson's ninth punt, Taylor and Webster back. Webster with a 55-yard return for a touchdown already. They're going to let it bounce. Not a lot of great punts tonight in terms of hang time or, or distance, but the reason is it's hard to kick in this weather because the ball gets so much heavier than normal. Plus, the hang time is eliminated with the weather. With rain falling, continuing to fall, and the Aggies lead at 16 to nothing, looking for their ninth consecutive win. First and 10 from the 34. AM keeps it on the ground, and the swarming Oklahoma defense, led by Kelly Gregg, just wrap up Dante Hall. Kelly Gregg. Join us tomorrow on Penn and Teller's Sin City. I've been a match made in heaven. I didn't know all these things. <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Keeps you moving. Nothing else to do now with him on strength. Or, well, I'm sorry, locked out. Second down and 12. Pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage, looking for Sir Parker. Romero may have gotten a hand on it. Frank Romero, the true freshman out of Moore, Oklahoma. They are very high on this young man. And they should be. Six foot five, 240. Watch him here, number 85. He works his way up the field. He sees it's a three-step drop, gets his hands up in the air, and knocks it down. You couldn't play the three-step drop 
quick passing game any better than that. And the ironic part of that situation is that Romero turned down AM to go to Oklahoma. Well, that's why the AM coaches know so much about these OU oh. defenders, because they recruited a lot of them. On third and 12, into the flat, the pass is complete. Diving to the first down is Matt Bumgarner. And where the officials mark it, he will be about two yards short. Matt Bumgarner kind of was a name we really didn't talk about until last week. But in the last two weeks, I think his stock has risen. Well, he's made some big plays. He's a guy that's a sure catch guy. You know, he's had a little bit of a snake-bitten career here. He's had some injuries. He hasn't really completed a full season. His grandfather, Max, played for the Chicago Bears and the University of Texas. Jackson, Leckler's punt, moves him way back to the nine. Gets up maybe to the 17-yard line. 49 yards on the kick, eight on the return. And we'll take a timeout with 3.04 left to play in the third. A&M by 16 over Oklahoma. Maybe he'll do it next week. Well, he's going to have an opportunity now. He's got two games left, but both defenses, Texas Tech, who he has next week, and then he comes and plays Texas A&M, are very formidable defenses. So it'll be interesting, but I think he's already cinched the Heisman Trophy. I think I said 100 for it's 200. 200. He needs a little bit more. You know, John Blake is showing some patience tonight with Jake Sills. He's made a commitment to go with him, and he's stuck with him. Jeff Luttrell swarmed over. Gets up to the 25-yard line. The X-Files on every weeknight on FX at 8 o'clock and starting Thursday, catch newbie Blake. His team has played well for the most part tonight. Not many penalties, only one turnover, but it was a costly one. Cobbett in motion on third and four. Sills looking for a tight end screen, and they've got him. Diving forward up to the 28-yard line, short of the first down by a yard. It was Jason Freeman. Well, that's the kind of play, you know, it's a high percentage completion type play. I think that you want to run if you're Oklahoma to get something going, to loosen up this A&M defense because obviously they haven't spread them out. Now, Sills has completed seven passes, but for only 25 yards. So, you know, the percentage is high, obviously, but you got to try to get some more run after catch when you complete the seven passes because that's what three and a half yards of yeah. completion, and that's not acceptable in terms of moving the football. Taylor and Webster back, standing on their own 42. Ferguson, a line drive kick to Taylor. Loses the football, still loose. And it looks like A&M got it back. And they did. 38 yards on the kick. You know, they were fortunate that time, a and Now, what Taylor doesn't do, he doesn't go over and catch the ball and get his body underneath it. He kind of reaches for the football. And he is very fortunate that Oklahoma did not recover that. you got to go get your body underneath it or let it go. And R.C. Slocum doesn't like that because the one thing you do at a and you play well in the kicking game, and you give your offense and your defense outstanding field position, which they have here right now, but you don't want to turn it over. Corey Ivey had a shot at it, couldn't wrap it up. Sir Parker in motion. Play action. In the flat to Parker. Oh, he is going to be swarmed over by Rocky Kalmus. The freshman out of Jenks, Oklahoma, was Oklahoma's defensive player of the year last year in high school. I think we have a penalty flag thrown. And it's going against Oklahoma. May have been face masked. John Blake can't believe it. John said, you got to be kidding me. I was watching. I was, I was standing right here. I didn't see anything. Well, it was the lesser of the two face mask penalties. Unintentional, only five yards. Let's you know, look at it again, see if we can see it. You know, I don't like this rule because the player never does it intentionally. Now you're going to see Parker with the football, 
He turns, he goes around. Now, it looks like that was the face mask right there by um, Rocky Bright, I believe it was. But, I, it, hey, that to me should not be a foul because he's just reaching back. I've never liked that penalty. If it's intentional, fine. But when a guy gets his hand inadvertently caught in there, it shouldn't be one. The cries of Toombs, Jamar Toombs. Over the left side. Just a reminder, tomorrow on Fox Sports Net, some of the top professional golfers in the world shoot it out in the chilly midfall air of Atlanta. Final round of the Subaru Sarazen World Open, Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Check your local listings from beautiful Chateau Alain Country Club in Brazelton, I think it is, Georgia, up north of Atlanta. And that's going to wind up the third quarter. Everybody stands at Kyle Field. Brandon Stewart's done a nice job for the Aggies, and they will head to the final stanza leading 16 to nothing. The Oklahoma Sooners, 16 to nothing. And then second down and two on the 42-yard line. High formation, total yards, Oklahoma only 58. The pitch to Hall. Able to get to the outside, and he's going to be upended by Rodney Rideau, the junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. But that was good enough for the first down. A toss sweep that time. Now watch Andy Vincent, number 78, pull around right there. Excellent job by the big offensive woman, and also Toombs right there. One of the things the coaches wanted Toombs to improve was his blocking, and if that's any indication, he's really improving. Two really good blocks that time by an offensive tackle and fullback. Well, Toombs told us last week, he said, boy, those guys come at you fast. And you're trying to block them. <laughs> and he doesn't like the block. That's no, not kidding. He, he wants like to tote the mail. Nor do I blame him. Keep it on the ground. They'll try the other side. A little student body left. Hall dancing around. Penalty flag is thrown as Hall gets up to the Oklahoma 45-yard line. Does that bring you back memories of USC? Absolutely. <laughs> we used to run it left, right, about 40 times a game. Looks like it will be a holding call. Talking it over with Kelly Gregg. You, know, you look at Kelly Gregg's numbers, his numbers are better than all the defensive players except for Dat Win, as far as the Lombardi finalists are concerned. The foul. He's not in there. It's holding by the offensive team. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Well, the one thing about Kelly Gregg, he plays so hard. Now you're going to see Toombs here. He pulls around, watch him block. He's going to get on the corner. He's going to find the defender to go get, and he lowers the boom on him. That's a good job, but that's a nice job by Hall of getting up the field. You look at the numbers on both of these guys. Obviously, Toombs has had 50 yards, Hall only 31, but Hall had a stinger coming into this game. First down again and 12. Hall, left side, finds a little crease and takes advantage of it. Ron, you know where this is smart by Steve Craythorpe, the offensive coordinator? You pound the second and third quarters with a big guy like Toombs. The defense is a little bit tired, and all of a sudden you bring in the shorter, quicker guy like Hall, and he just gets up in there. Watch Ryan Fisher, number 94. He gets taken by the play, and that time it's a good spin by Hall of getting the extra yards up the field. I like the changeup, though, in the style of running backs. Second and one, Hall again, right side, first down, and a little extra to spare. Rodney Rideau hanging on to the ankles. Rocky Kalmus missing the tackle. Rideau didn't, but Dante Hall showing a little get up now. He's got a little get up, but he's, you know, he's rested too. You know, yeah. he, he didn't practice all week, or he practiced a little bit on Thursday because of the injury, but he's energized right now, but he's also fresh. And the one thing about this Oklahoma defense, you have to remember, they're very young. They've played well this year in the fourth quarter, but they're really getting pounded tonight, play after play, by the A&M offense. Oklahoma really hasn't blitzed a whole lot, mixed things up tonight as much as we thought they would on defense. Dante Hall, left side, more running room, dragged out of bounds. Dale Allen, the senior out of Winniewood, Oklahoma, on the stop. I tell you, that has to be good si a good sign for R.C. Slocum with Dante Hall starting to run the football because he's been injured, banged up a little bit this year, and this is the first we've really seen him get 
get going and get to the outside and able to turn the corner. Yeah, and at the beginning of the year, the deepest position on this A&M football team was the running backs. But they've had some injuries. Tiki Hardeman was declared academically ineligible. And all of a sudden, it became a thin position, which is why Toombs has emerged. Hall's carrying the workload. Up to the 25-yard line, maybe down to the 24. And again, it was Jamar Toombs doing the blocking for Dante Hall. He is becoming a complete player. Now watch him on this. He's going to look inside for a defender. He doesn't see a defender, so he gets outside behind Haimuli. He gives Haimuli a push, and then he comes up and chops the run support. That's excellent vision that time by the young freshman. Well, you got to be impressed. Oh, yeah. Third down and about, oh, half a yard. Who do you think is going to get the ball here? I'm going to say 28. Toombs and Simpson now in the backfield. Oklahoma jump, free play. Doesn't matter. He just, he, he kind of reminds me of Joel Makovica a little bit in the sense that you don't get to see a whole lot of negative cards from this guy. And you know, you know what happens when freshmen come in? They're a little bit like rookies in the National Football League. They don't know any better, so they just <laughs> go like heck, and they, they energize. I hate to keep using the word, but they energize a group of veteran guys sometimes by the way they play. It's almost a reckless passion the foul. that they play with. Offsides by the defense. Five-yard penalty from previous spot. The yardage is sufficient for a first down. Well, that's only the third penalty against Oklahoma, but it has cost them 25 yards. The big one, of course, the pass interference penalty, which led to a touchdown. Oklahoma averaging 11 penalties a game, almost 12. First and 10. 12 minutes left in the ball game. Parker trying to strip the ball away from him. They come up with it. But of the officials, did they see it? They're going to say he was down. Well, Texas A&M obviously just trying to pound the ball and run out this clock and get out of here with the 16 to nothing win and or add another score onto it. Brandon Stewart, let's do a little report card on him tonight. He has thrown the ball, I think, very effectively. What about next week when Randy McCown's going to be 100%? Well, R.C. Sultan's going to have himself a oh, tough oh. choice because both players have played well when they've been asked to come in in a relief role. And Brandon Stewart, being on the bench for a couple of weeks, seems to have helped him a little bit. He not only got healthy, but it just seems like he's got a little bit more poise. Oklahoma's going to call a timeout. Reveille needs to calm down the excitement. AM leads 16 to nothing. 11 14 left to play in College Station. Welcoming you back to Kyle Field, and next year it will be a different Kyle Field. It normally seats 70,000, but construction in one of the end zones has limited it to 58,000, but Hardy, when that gets done, it's going to be nice. Well, this area right here is going to be a bunch of club seating, and below it is going to be a deck, and above it is going to be a deck. This place, like you said, will hold 80,000, and man, is this going to be noisy. It's going to be one of the great places in all of college football to come in and play. It's going to be a bigger home field advantage for Texas A&M. On the option, Stewart keeps it. Great ball fake by Brandon Stewart. He knew if he would have pitched that ball, it would have been disaster with a capital D. You know, he's not known for his option skills because he's not as mobile as Randy McCowan. But what he is here, he's extremely smart in not pitching the ball, like you said, and he cuts up the field and makes positive yards. That's just smart. That's got nothing to do with speed. That's just being a smart quarterback. Frank Romero had smelled that one out for Oklahoma. Third down and five. Ball on the 15 from the shotgun. OU showing blitz, and here they come. Over the middle, pass is complete. Derek Spiller, the senior out of Lamarck, Texas, from the tight end position, his first reception of the evening. And that's just a throw and catch. Spillers to the right of your screen, sl split out a little bit in the slot. But he comes across the middle, and as you said, Stewart just reads it perfectly and puts the ball right on the money. Last week, Spiller had three very important third down catches versus Oklahoma State, and that was a big third down catch versus the Sooners. Well, between him and Dan Campbell, the two tight ends, those guys oh, yeah. are probably the best tandem in the country. First and goal from the sixth, the Aggies knocking on the door. 
Straight ahead, nothing going on. You know, you look at this score, and uh, I don't think that's indicative of the type of defense Oklahoma played, but you have to also give credit to that AM defense, and that's exactly what we thought it would be tonight. And this really helps a drive like this, helps that AM defense, because guess what? They're on the sidelines resting right now, and the AM offense is pounding the Oklahoma defense, and they're going to get tired as you look at AM this year in the red zone. 18 touchdowns out of 33 opportunities. The option again. Stewart keeps, knows Fader, got it. Now the yell leaders better get ready to be thrown into the duck pond. AM is up the lead to 22 0 as Brandon Stewart runs it in. His first rushing touchdown of Guys, get ready to get wet. And AM is going to go for two. Missed one extra point. Want to make sure they get it up to 24. They don't have enough people on the field right now. They only have 10. Still plenty of time. Chris Cole finally makes his way on the field. Stewart now split wide to the right. It is Chris Taylor running the show. In the smoke and the haze. Can we see him if he gets in? Not a problem. Ante Jones wrapping him up. And the two-point conversion fails. But the Aggies with 9.24 left to play in the ball game have taken the lead even more. 22 zip. We'll be back. Stewart is stalk blocking Corey Ivory down the field. Nice job by Brandon Stewart. Leckler is short kick. Thornton has some running room. Up to the 35 to the 37 yard line. AM scoring drive led by Brandon Stewart. Getting the six yard touchdown run, 66 yards. Took him 624. You know, you talked about Samisi Haimuli, the first Tongan to play for AM. Interesting story, I think they told you and I last year already, was defensive coach Bill Johnson, when they were recruiting him, said, listen, I'll wrestle you, but if I beat you, you've got to come to AM. Yeah, and the kid said, no, I don't want to do it. I'm going to come to AM anyway. But, you know, I really like Bill Johnson. He's a good defensive line coach, but he has no chance to ever <laughs> out-wrestle Hymule. And, again, I really like Coach Johnson, but I would not bet on him no, in that no, match. No. Parker, the lone setback. Jake Sills. Lobs the pass, incomplete, should have been caught. Jason Freeman had it, took his eyes off it, and then took a wallet. So you want to be a 12th man, how about this? This uh, is we, what you go through. We talked about Drew Bridges as the 12th man on the kickoff. He runs down, he sees it, he hits the wedge, and literally three Oklahoma kick return guys in the wedge knock him down. That's called giving yeah. it all for your school. But there is a great success story this year with the 12th man. Uh, Chad Franson, right. who's uh, a linebacker, and back, he backs up Dat Wynn, came here, became a 12th man. Now he actually worked his way into the rotation, actually gets some playing time and is on the depth chart. From Diana, Texas. Second down and 10. Parker. Tough evening for Demond Parker. He's trying to be the first OU running back to get three 1,000-yard seasons in a row. Also has a chance of becoming the all-time rusher in Oklahoma history. Came into tonight's game just over 800 yards behind Joe Washington. You know, in this league this year, obviously Ricky Williams is having a great year, and there's been some outstanding offenses, but everybody's got to remember that there's a lot of outstanding offenses here in the Big 12. So guys like Parker and some, you know, prolific offensive stars aren't having great years, but a lot of it's got to do with who they're playing on defense. On third and 11, Sills pass complete. Jason Freeman this time hangs on, but he might be short of the first down. And they're going to unpile, and I don't think he got it. Nope. They gave it to him. It is a first down. Nice job by Freeman. Well, Fox Sports News Primetime is your source for college football news. Who's making a run for one Ohio State? 
Do you think DeMond Parker is just a tad frustrated right about now? We saw a good example there. Looked like there was a space opening up and how quickly it closed. Well, I think he's very frustrated, but all competitive athletes, when they're not having the degree of success that they want to have or they normally have, have a tendency to get frustrated. And it's hard because, but again, it's not his offensive line's fault, in my mind, as much as it is the great defense that they're playing against. He picked up three on that play, second down and seven. Looking for a pass into the flat. It's going to be overthrown, intended for Ahmed Kaba. John Blake just has to be a little frustrated. His defense has played well. Offense has been stuck in neutral the whole evening. Well, and John Blake knows it, but John Blake also told us the other day he had to get Damon Parker going tonight. And by going, you're having a big, big night. And obviously, that's not happening because he's far below his season average coming into the game of over 100 yards rushing per game. Oh, you only 37 total yards rushing the football. Only four teams have broken the century mark rushing against AM. Only one in the last three games. Third down and seven. Sills from the shotgun. Pressure on. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Gerald Williams, the senior out of Decatur, Georgia. But we do have a penalty flag. The Aggie fans that have stuck around in this inclement weather don't like it. We'll listen in to referee John Lewis when he makes the call. The foul. Pass interference by the defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. I was wondering what the call was because I, I didn't know what that signal was. I mean, pass interference is a little bit different signal. It's more straight ahead. And R.C. Slocum doesn't like it either. Here's Sills, you see him looking inside, and it looks like right there, number 52 makes the pass interference. Simon was holding Freeman. Eamon Simon. RC didn't like it, but Oklahoma is finally in AM territory. Their only sustained drive they had, they fumbled it away. Latrell, right side, stacked up. Cornelius Anthony, the sophomore out of Missouri City, Texas, already the middle linebackers. For Texas A&M, Wynn and Anthony, they're closing in on 20 tackles between them. Well, the ball has been run inside a great deal tonight, right at the linebackers. Texas A&M is one of the few teams in the Big 12 and in the country that employs a 34 defense. In other words, they've got three defensive linemen, four linebackers, and four secondary people. The linebackers make the plays in a 34 defense. Now, second and seven. Bills, they pick up the blitz, running for his life. Still running, lets it fly. Dangerous pass, falls harmlessly incomplete. Christian Rodriguez, the redshirt freshman out of Mesquite, Texas, putting the pressure on Sills, who now has a little in his giddy up. You know, you're going to see Sills get outside, but you know, things are tough when you see play where an official comes over and helps you get up off the ground. Watch this. Things are tough when the official's trying to help you. <laughs> and Jake was grabbing that right hamstring. Third nice, down and seven. That's a nice gesture. It was nice. I don't think Jake realized it. I've never seen that before, to be honest with you. No, I haven't either. Pressure again. Sills lets it fly. Has a man. Good defense. Pass floated a little bit too much. That allowed Jason Webster to use the closing speed. Intended for Gerald Williams. Williams was there. Webster's having a big night. Obviously, the punt return before has also done an outstanding job as a DP. Now, look at these guys holding hands right there. The reason they're holding hands is so that when the ball is snapped, they let go so that they're all going at the same time because they cannot hear the cadence. When you see offensive linemen come up to the line of scrimmage and hold hands, it's so they all get off at the same time because they cannot hear the cadence by the quarterback. You see that in the NFL, and you see it in loud stadiums like this a great deal. Ferguson for his 10th punt, but instead we have a timeout. 
John Blake's going to talk about it. 622 left to play in the final quarter. Texas A&M looks to have a pretty good grasp on their number seven ranking. Sills took a hit, but he's still standing. His team trail. Of A&M, OU going forward on fourth down. Still alive up to the 40, but it will not be a first down. The pass was knocked around, but Parker came up with it, but could not get the first, and A&M will take over on down. The best part of this play is the wonderful swarm running to the football by Texas A&M. Watch these defenders. Watch these maroon shirts all of a sudden show up. That's great, great team defense and swarming the football and getting a bunch of maroon shirts around the ball and Jason Webster number 39 shows up again and makes a big hit. Brandon Jennings had to hit him right in the face. Couldn't come up with it. But AM takes over. Ball on their own 39 yard line. First and 10 just over six minutes left to play in the ball game. Stewart three step drop fakes it and he is going to be dropped by Ron. Checked that by Jeremy Wilson Guest, his second sack of the season, and that is the fifth sack of the night for Oklahoma in the comparison of the two QBs this evening. Well, obviously, the biggest differentiation is in the yardage. They've attempted about the same 17 and 20, but 169 yards for Stewart, only 39 yards for, for Sills, and that's been the difference in the game. OU's inability to make any plays or any big plays in the passing game. Second and 19, Stewart directing traffic. Pass is complete. Chris Taylor with the reception, knocked out of bounds. That was close to being a late hit. And the penalty flag is finally thrown. Right in front of John Blake, and I think John may have gotten popped. Rocky Kalmus, the true freshman, is the one who popped him. JB can handle it, though. He bench pressed 500 pounds the other day just you know, to show his players. I, I saw that. That's amazing. You know, when we were there a year ago, he put up about 475 in his street clothes. So he's the strongest coach in the country. Now disregard the flag. You know what, Ron? I didn't think that was a foul. I, I thought Kalmus was just hustling to get over there. Watch him come out of there now. You know, he's a young player. He's a freshman. He's energetic. Eh. I, I thought he, he, he laid back. off. I thought he really laid off. Watch John Blake, though. The forearm shiver by Boo. Ooh! <laughs> you know what? That's the best hit of the night. Yeah, John Blake was a defensive <laughs> nose guard for Oklahoma, and that, he's still got some pop left in him. The pride of Sand Springs, Oklahoma. That brings up a third down situation for the Aggies. Oh, you showing blitz? Did they jump off sides? Yep. Penalty flag is thrown as the pass intended for Chris Taylor incomplete. Oh, I tell you, now you see why they have game, but it's so close. I mean, that is, you know, what, one foot, maybe two? Yeah, there's a fine line. It's like turnovers. It's a fine line between getting a turnover and sometimes a getting penalized or not getting penalized. I tell you what, though, looking at this defense, I like their style on defense. I like the aggression. I like the speed and the passion the foul. in which they play. Offsides by the defense. Five-yard penalty for a previous spot. Replay third down. That's not a bad improvement from 11 down to That's, It's good. And, you know, again, penalties are like turnovers. And sometimes it's when they happen. If it's third down, if it's first down, if it's first and 30, who cares if you're offside? Yeah. But, you know, on third and two, you do care if you're offside. Oh, so it's it's where, Absolutely. Passing absolutely. Passing third down and three. Stewart out into the flat. The pass is complete. Oklahoma right there to wrap up Taylor. Ghana Joseph makes the play, the 96 Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And that's another first down for the Aggies. Pickup of nine on the play. Well, the offensive line, this is what they've done so far tonight. And they're big. And R.C. Slocum gives a lot of the credit of the development athletically and strength-wise of this offensive line to Mike Clark the strength and conditioning coach who's just done a fabulous job with all the athletes at A&M. The cleanest cut fire boy looking guy was Seth McKinney, the redshirt freshman. Stewart going for the home run. Pass is complete. Touchdown.
at him. Chris Cole with the touchdown. And the tradition of getting the kiss. Seven yard touchdown by Chris Cole out of Orange, Texas. A classic example of when a quarterback underthrows a wide receiver. The defensive back is playing man to man, does not see the ball. The receiver comes back, catches the ball, and runs away from the defender. His fifth touchdown of the season. The extra point is good by Bynum. And that will send the waterlogged fans heading to the exits. They're going to see Stewart drop back. Now watch the ball. It's under throw. Cole sees the ball. Ivy, number nine, falls down. Cole comes back, catches the ball, and goes in. If you're playing man-to-man -man as a corner or a safety, you cannot stop the underthrown pass. People do it on purpose. I don't think that time it was done on purpose. But people in their offense in the NFL and in college do it on purpose. Well, the second most famous person out of Orange, Texas, <laughs> the first is R.C. Slocum. And we're just saying that because he told us to. <laughs> Chris Cole's going, but I tell you, Corey Ivey has to feel when he looks at the film tomorrow, he's not going to feel real turned around a couple of times tonight. He's been in position, just hasn't made the play. Well, there's R.C. Slocum. He continues to coach. you got to keep coaching in situations like this as you look at Brandon Stewart. And I'll tell you, it'll be very interesting to see what a and does oh, with yeah. this quarterback situation in the next couple of weeks because right now you look at Brandon Stewart, as you mentioned before, he's just done a fabulous job tonight. Well, he was replaced in the North Texas game by Randy McCown. You know, we talked to Brandon Stewart earlier in the year, in fact, right after the Florida State game, and talked about all the problems he's had and the expectations and the criticism from the fans. He is such a mature young man. He said, listen, I've learned by it. It's the greatest experience in my life having to go with people criticizing me and being under a microscope, and I don't mind it because I've grown up. Well, it shows his character, number one, but it also shows that he didn't get his head down in the goblet, so to speak, and he was given the opportunity to come back and play. He made the most of it. Sooners trying to get something going. Michael Thornton, look out. One man to beat. And Leckler tackle. What a job by Shane Leckler to bring down Michael Thornton. Thornton had a 79-yard return against Texas. Leckler got hit, got back up, made the stop. Not bad for a backup quarterback. Well, here's our guy again, Drew Bridges, 12th man. He gets, oh, Lickler, ah, boom. Gets a little bit held, but you got to fight through that. Nice job by that time by Seth Luttrell blocking him, haunting him, and he says, hey, the 12th guy is not going to make a play on me. And here's old Thornton. He starts off to his right. He gets a good block. He cuts back. Parker gives him a great block. Jones misses the tackle. He heads upfield. But Leckler is sensational there because he doesn't give him a two-way go. He makes him go to the sideline. Penalty flags thrown as the pass is incomplete. Should be a holding call against Oklahoma. You know, when you look in the paper tomorrow, if Oklahoma throws a couple more penalties, they'll say, gee, they did it again. Nine penalties. But they only had two for most of the game. Absolutely. That's a great point because this team, the University of Oklahoma, I think has played extremely well tonight, and they've played discipline. And that's one of the things that's been people have been critical of John Blake. He's, he's at times, on quote, looked disorganized. But that, to me, has not been the case. The foul is holding by the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. We've got a lot of football still coming your way on Fox Sports Net next week. John Dakin on the field. He doesn't like it. Michael Thornton, the lone setback. Sills tucks it. Takes off. Hesitated just a moment. Not a smart thing to do as he crosses the 40. Well, our 12th man is, he's done for the evening. Maybe an E. You know, R.C. Slocum has changed the walk-on program here at Texas A&M, and he's named it the 12th man team because he wants to encourage as many walk-ons to come out to help in building or keeping this program where it's at because in today's day and age, you don't have enough scholarships. With 85, you need a bunch of walk-ons 
and the walk-on program at AM is now called the 12th man team. Sills pass is complete. Turned around at his blocker. Penalty flag is thrown, and it may be a face mask. Blocker spun around pretty good. The senior out of Houston, Texas. You know, we do a lot of football, and we see what a lot of guys have been in college. Blocker's got the best. He lettered in golf. Not too many football players letter in golf in high school. <laughs> Not that I know of. Well, Not listen in. And it is a face mask. You know, maybe, maybe he was preparing for his post-career, <laughs> you know. And there's the bio on Chris Blocker. Good size. His nine receptions coming into the night matched his 96 season, which was his best. He's actually rated as a defensive back. One of the better ones coming out of high school. Oh, you made him a wide receiver. Yeah, because they didn't want any Dolphins playing defense for him. <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't yeah. go hand in hand. It's the pants and the polo shirt <laughs> that throw him off. On first and ten, Sills looking for Pater. Pushing and shoving incomplete intended for blocker. Jay Brooks, the redshirt freshman out of Colleen, Texas, on the coverage. Yeah, that was good coverage, but you got to like what Oklahoma is doing because you're saying, hey, let's, let's work on our passing game, obviously, here. You're not going to win this football game. We'll work on the passing game, see if we can get Sills in a position where next week he can make a few more plays. Second down and 10, 3.21 to go. Here comes AM. Sills hurries the pass, and it falls incomplete, intended for Michael Thornton. All the executive producers of FX College Football are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer is Roy Hamilton. Tonight's game produced by Mike Helling, directed by Ken Fouts. And the vice president of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. And once again, a big thank you to all our camera guys that have braved the rain. And it is coming down again. Third down and 10 for the Sooners. Have played well for John Blake defensively. Offensively, they have spun. Low snap. Sills has some protection, lets it fly in and out of the hands, incomplete. How many passes have they dropped? Blocker dropped it, Toya Jones with the hit. You know, we talk about quarterbacks, and you talk to the people of OU, and they say, you know, we're a quarterback really away. Think about it. they could have had Achilles Smith who now plays for Oregon. Right. They recruited him out of high school and then they recruited him out of junior college. But he decided to go to Oregon after spending a year in the minor leagues and then spending a year at Grossmont Junior College. I'll tell you, the other guy, though, that they recruited was Machete from Colorado. Right. You know, he, he came down between Oklahoma and Colorado when Mike Machete decided to go to the University of Colorado. So they have tried to get quality quarterbacks to come here at OU. But, you know, when you say Oklahoma, you still think of option football as opposed to a place that's going to line up and throw the ball 40 times a game. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. On fourth down, the Sooners are going to go for it. Sills. Third down and 30. Passes complete. To the tight end, Chris Hammonds out of Sulphur, Oklahoma. The former walk-on, his first reception of the year. And look for Oklahoma, I think. The offense that Joe Dickinson and everybody probably want to go to is more like a Nebraska-type offense. Yeah, it's a play action with some option because at Oklahoma, you've got to run the option. That's just part of the deal. You've got to play good defense at AM. and At Oklahoma, you've got to have some degree of option football because when Chuck Fairbanks and Barry Schwitzer built the Oklahoma monster, it was built around option football. On fourth and eight, Sills over the middle, passes overthrown, intended for Gerald Williams. You know, and going on that point, Ron, I think it also makes it tough for John Blake, which is one of the reasons that he wanted to go back to quote the wishbone at the beginning of this year, is because whenever something doesn't go right, Everybody says, well, let's go back to the old days and right. let's run the option. Well, that's easier said than done in today's modern college football. He is a quality man, as is R.C. Slocum. You know, and they're, they're opposites, though. John Blake was never a coordinator. Coach for the Cowboys, 
got the job at a young age. R.C. Slocum was a longtime defensive coordinator, a veteran of the coaching wars, got the job. He was probably, honestly, more ready for the job when he received it. John Blake has grown into the job. R.C. Slocum hit the ground running when he got the job. But the difference is experience and age. Well, the Texas A&M has fumbled and Oklahoma's taken over. Well, they get a little break. But I think John would be the first to admit that he has grown up in this job and it, he was a little overwhelmed his first year and you just have to wish him the very best because he's such a quality young man, John Blake is. And the players like him, he's a good recruiter, he plays hard and Barry Schwitzer would not have recommended him for the job unless he felt he was the right guy. I think though, the administration in Oklahoma is going to make a very interesting decision. Do you stay with them or do you fire them? And, you know, obviously speculation is they're going to fire them, but I think everybody should just wait and see what happens at the end of the year. Sills going for it is going to be picked off easily. Jason Webster has a punt return for a touchdown. How about an interception for a touchdown? Penalty flag is thrown, and it's going to come back a little bit. What a night, however, for Jason Webster. Well, he'll be the Big 12 special teams. I think so. Or defensive player of the week, or just plain old player of the week. He's doing it all. Uh, a little block before the knees. Let's take a look at the interception again. That was up for grabs. We're going to see Sills drop back. Gets a little bit of air underneath it. He's under a little bit of pressure, and Webster goes up. Catches the ball at its highest point. Well underthrown. Gerald Williams looked like he had a half a step on the defense. After second interception of the year, they'll push it back. Final 2 0 1. One hundred and twenty one seconds left. Twenty nine and nothing. Is our score. A&M still with a tough schedule that awaits them. Well, especially after watching Missouri. This oh, yeah. week. You know they're impressive. Obviously Texas is very very good with Ricky Williams. So it's going to be interesting these next two weeks with the Texas A&M Aggies. Parker has some running room. Tackle. He's run out of bounds finally by Rodney Rideau. Well, tomorrow on Fox Sports Net, some of the top national golfers in the world shoot it out in Atlanta. The final round of the Subaru Sarahs and World Open at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Pacific. Former Oklahoma State golfer Bob Tway leads by one at minus 14 after a 66 today. Dudley Hart, one stroke back, threw in a little 62 at Chateau. Bob Tway, when I first met him, he played for Oklahoma State, used to call him Brillo. I love me bringing that up but because of the Brillo looking hair. Now lives in Oak Street and Edmond, Oklahoma. <laughs> Ernest Rhodes with the carry is Texas a and probably just going to run things out. And you want your runners like Sir Parker on the plate before to stay in bounds. You know? The end of games, whether you're winning or losing, has almost become like basketball. You gotta be aware, whether you're an offensive or defensive player, of the clock at all times. This will be the ninth consecutive victory for Texas A&M. They will take a 9-8 series lead in these two teams. Their best start since 94 when they went 10-0-1. Final minute 23. I think what impresses us most about AM is they really had a shot to win the Florida State game as Randy McCowan just sits and watches due to his injury. Expected back next week, but this team, RC Slocum's been able to have them appreciate every victory. Nothing's been taken for granted this year. And his team has improved, and that's a sign of a good football team. Absolutely. And, you know, the one thing about playing those early games like they did in the kickoff classic, it gives you an extra two weeks in which to practice and prepare for the season, which is why he took the game, because he has a young football team. Rhodes keeps his feet after the initial hit. Thought he should have had more, and that might do it. We've got
got a player down on the field for Oklahoma but boy I wouldn't want his decision you got a guy that completes about 51 percent of his passes he's already tossed four touchdowns this year and you got a guy who comes in tonight plays against a good defense plays well I think the issue though is the fact is McCowan healthy and the other day at practice when we were observing him he did not look 100 percent as you mentioned Ron so I, I think that's the first thing if he's healthy well then you make the decision if he's not healthy forget about it Stewart play because you're playing against a very good Missouri defense and an improving Texas defense two weeks from now you hate seeing an injury any time in a game especially in the latter stages of a contest Scott Anderson the trainer of Oklahoma out on the field can't quite see the number Brandon Stewart though he's got my kind of haircut he's losing a little bit up top isn't he I, I did not want to bring that up but yes yes he does there's Ray Dorr the quarterback coach that brought in and met so much as Brandon Moore is favoring obviously that left leg the sophomore out of Freeport New York brother Rob Moore is a wide receiver with the Arizona Cardinals and old Ray Dorr who kind of an old quarterback guru I like what he does he likes having that big old garbage can fill of water and he throws a couple balls in there and practice that what water ball drill and he, they've needed it the last seven weeks. you know we, we've talked about him before but he, he's as innovative a quarterback coach as there is in the country he gives his players every opportunity to be successful I love him because he's a great teacher sir Parker and what should be the final play of the game the Oklahoma defense stacking them up and that should do it. A tough night for the Oklahoma Sooners. They played well defensively, but their offense just didn't get it done. Only 124 total yards, and R.C. Slocum gets his ninth victory of the year. John Blake loses tonight. You know, one thing when I look at this A&M football team, Ron, is the word chemistry. And I know that's coach speak sometimes, but this is a football team that genuinely likes each other. The coaches are all on the same page. And it starts at the top with R.C. Slocum. But when we went to practice on Thursday and Friday, you see nothing but a football team, quote, pulling together and playing together. Now here's a bunch of guys on their way to the duck that are on their way to the duck line, and they're playing together and they're pulling it. Look at this guy right here. He's wiping that guy's feet off. What is that all about? He looks like what, the guy. What is going on here? I think I saw him in the movie Stripes. <laughs> I, I may be wrong. I like these haircuts. <laughs> well, they're going to go to the duck pond, then they'll have a yell practice, and they'll get ready for Missouri. Well, the specialty teams of Texas A&M struck early. Jason Webster, 55-yard punt return. And, you know, he gets some great blocks, but he does a lot of it on his own. He goes north and south, and to be a great punt returner or a kickoff returner, you got to make the kick or miss, and that's exactly what happens. And Stewart goes upstairs, and he's able to connect with Chris Cole for the touchdown in the pouring rain. And moving on to the second half, the AM offense did what they had to do. Stewart on the option from seven yards out, touchdown AM. Some great blocks that time up front by the guards and the tackles. Stewart, nice job passing tonight. Yeah, this is what we talked about before. He throws the ball behind Cole. Cole comes back and gets it. An underthrown pass is just as dangerous as a deep pass. The cannons are firing. The smoke has covered the field as R.C. Slocum singing the fight song. And Eric Clemens is with that win on the field. Eric? All right, guys. Thank you very much. That win, another 10 tackle performance. You guys must be used to this by now. Seven games in the rain. What was the key, especially your defensive unit, shutting Oklahoma down so well? Well, um, you know, the, um, we, we played a great game. I think uh, Coach did a great job of uh, calling the plays, and we did a great job of executing. Um, you know, Oklahoma did a great job coming here. You know, they're a good team. They uh, made some mistakes, and, and um, you know, and, and the things didn't go right for them, but um, they're a very good team. They're one of those teams that uh, have great, a lot of talent, and, you know, you give them a break, you know, they're going to come back and haunt you. Okay. Now, you, you your first play, uh, first time you touch the ball, Webster gets back there on special teams, gives you a quick lead with the 55-yard punt return. What did that do for, you, for your psyche, at least mentally, going into a game like this? Well, every time a... Uh, Big game when you come in and the special team, 
helps you. I think, uh, God, you feel that relief. You know, you, you don't want to come in and uh, you're zero and zero and then back and forth, back and forth. But uh, special team always play a big part. And uh, I think uh, Jason Webster did a great job returning the ball. It's the first time he ever returned the ball, I think. And um, and it just gave us some room and uh, some breathing. Uh, we knew we could just, you know, hold him. I think that was a, that was a, <laughs> that was good. a little more personal now. Butkus Award finalist, what do you feel about that? I mean, is it something that you're really looking forward to maybe getting a victory uh, and a personal award for yourself, Lombardi as well? Well, uh, the Buck is a great honor. I think, um, you know, no doubt about it, it's a prestigious award you know, for all linebackers in the country. But uh, being named to the finalist, I'm, I'm real honored, but uh, I'm just looking forward to hearing it. It's my last home game coming up against Missouri, and I'm looking for some wins. That's about it. All right, listen, you saw Waterboy last night. Uh, the team saw a team <laughs> movie. Give us a quick critique of that movie for us, and did that fire you up today? Well, it, uh, it did. I think um, he came, he just, one of those things that uh, is a unique story. You know, he came over, you know, a lot of obstacles. He uh, mm -hmm. overcame a lot of obstacles, and um, he came out there and just playing, and it just, it, it just shows um, when, you know, you put your mind to it, I think, uh, she didn't do anything. And uh, he did that, and it's it's just something that uh, we came up with. We didn't say nothing much about the pregame. We just uh, just talked about it last night a little bit, and that's about it. Sounds a lot like you, huh? We're no. coming out. So goes, All no, right. No. <laughs> hey, listen up. That win, another tremendous performance. We got a couple more Texas A&M Aggies waiting to talk to us. Let's send you back upstairs now to Ron and Artie. Guys? Yeah. Eric, when Thanks, you can make a David S uh, Sandler movie, an Adam Sandler movie, sound good. That's pretty good. Sound intellectual. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know what? He's a great linebacker, but he's not a movie critic. No. Believe me. <laughs> well, what's R.C. Slocum's thoughts about tonight's game? Eric, how about asking him? All right. Here's the coach. Happy birthday. What a way to get one with a shutout victory, coach. Uh, first of all, must feel pretty good the way it started. Webster, first time they touched the ball, he gives you a punt return for a touchdown. Well, we did that. That's actually the first time he's been back there all year. We put that in this week uh, thinking the weather might be bad. And their punter had been really pretty erratic where he punted the ball. So we said, we're going to put two guys back there. First time we've done that, and it, it worked like a charm for us. Now, I tell you, weather like this, I know this was your seventh game in rainy conditions, so you guys are probably used to it by now. But weather like this, you guys threw the ball a lot more than at least myself as a reporter expected, and you threw it well. Was that the plan coming in, rain or shine, you, you're going to throw the ball? We've played in a number of games this year that are wet, and we've also practiced a number of times. We've got a, a great practice field here, and we've we've said let's go out in it. And uh, we, I think, really have gotten uh, accustomed to throwing and catching. And I thought our guys did a, a magnificent job of, of handling the football, throwing and catching in uh, very uh, tough conditions. The gambler shows up again. You use Taylor at quarterback, and you run a reverse. It didn't work so well, but uh, you didn't pay too dearly for it. Well, we blocked their defensive end <laughs> the wrong way. I thought we had a chance there, and we end up blocking. Him right into the play, but uh, we, we're trying just to scramble around. I think the coaches are doing an excellent job of, of taking our players and, and doing what we have to do to win football games, and that's nine straight now. So they're doing a good job of that. Doing the an awfully good, doing job. A good job of executing it. Coach, a couple more questions for you. you. Got Missouri up next. I know you're taking one at a time. Missouri, very impressive today in its victory over Colorado. Uh, quick thoughts about the Tigers program, and, and they're going to be coming in here next week. Well, first of all, Larry Smith's done a great job uh, bringing that program back. Uh, I, I've seen them a little bit on tape. They're very sound. They were a good team last year. They were a bold team last year, and uh, they've come back this year, look like they've improved, and uh, they're, they'll be a great challenge for us. And really proud of the Big 12 Conference. Uh, week to week to week, it's a, you better line up and be ready to play because we've got a bunch of good teams in this league. All right, last question for you. You lost that first game to a then number two Florida State team. Now you've won nine in a row. I don't know if you know Ohio State lost earlier today. Do you think A&M has an outside shot maybe at this national championship? You know, we're not even going to talk about that this time. You know, we, we worried about the big uh, 12 South Zone championship <laughs> right now. That, that's what our goal is at this time. Okay, Coach, good luck to you. Happy birthday right. once again. Thank you. Shut out victory All for right. you. Thanks a lot. Ron and Arnie, let's go back up to you guys. And it is a happy birthday for R.C. Slocum. And, you know, R.C.'s a smart guy, and he knows that he's got a tough road to go between Missouri, Texas, and then if he gets into the Big 12 championship game, which it looks like it'll be against Kansas State, that is a tough road. And then if you get into a big bowl game or the final eight in the bowl games, it'll be obviously against the outstanding opponent. So he knows and he's smart. Keep the team focused on this week and this game, and don't worry about the big picture. I think too many people worry about that, especially people in the media. Well, one of the big connections tonight was Brandon Stewart to Chris Cole, and they have surrounded our Eric Clemens. Yeah, as long as they don't hit me, guys. They're a little bit bigger than I am. Brandon Stewart, Chris Cole, I was just telling you before we went on here, I mean, you guys threw the ball an awful lot today for it to be very rainy and wet conditions, but then again, you guys must be used to it. Was that the plan going in, Brandon? 
It was. They bring so many people up. The safety try to get involved in a run and, uh, you know, try to man up on the corners. And, uh, you know, we felt like our receivers could beat their corners and, and it ended up being, uh, you know, a good guess for us. Hollywood, uh, <laughs> Chris Cole, listen, uh, you, didn't, you didn't do a little whole lot that kind of took you out last week against Oklahoma State, but you really made a statement tonight with a couple of touchdown catches. Is this something they were planning to, to get you more involved tonight? Well, no, it just happened like that. I was in on the plays. Um, I'm just happy I can be part of this win, man. Um, Brandon threw the ball well. Offensive line, they block, made some plays. Um, that's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. What, what was the big key? I know defensively, I mean, you guys, the wrecking crew on the other side of the ball really bottled them up. But offensively, he talked a little bit about it going against the 46 defense. What's the one thing you really had to do tonight to really keep them off balance defensively? Well, we knew we had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Um, you give Dante the ball in the middle, and then we got isolation on the outside. So uh, we knew we, had, we could make some plays. They had some great corners at number eight um, in the country. So, um, But we felt we could beat them tonight. And, Okay, let's look ahead. Missouri comes in here next week. They had an impressive victory today. Talk a little bit about what you know about the Tigers and looking ahead to next week. Both of you. Uh, I don't know that much about them. We mm -hmm. hadn't played against them, and so I know they're a good football team. I, I know they've played a lot of teams well, especially today. Colorado's a good team. You know, they, they beat them and play them, you know, pretty handily. And so uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. But but I'm glad we can do it here at Kyle Field, and I feel uh, I feel pretty confident about our team and, and being out here on Kyle Field and, and the things we can get done. All right, and, and you, uh, going against that defense, you might have seen a little bit of them today on TV. They look pretty impressive over Colorado, Missouri did. What do you think about uh, the next couple of weeks in hand for you? Well, they look pretty tough, but uh, I think we'll be able to handle them. Uh, we just come out and play. We execute like we know we can. Um, I think we'll be all right. All right, Chris Cole, congratulations to both of you guys. Brandon Thank Stewart, you. impressive victory, impressive performance by the A&M offense today. Ron and Artie, back to you guys. All right, Chris Cole, five receptions, 118 yards, and two touchdowns. And he and Stewart hook it up to lead A&M to the 29-0 victory over Oklahoma. We'll return to College Station right after this. Texas A&M make it nine in a row, go to nine and one on the year as they shut out the Oklahoma Sooners 29-0. An excellent defensive job by the Aggies tonight as they were able to hold him on Parker to well under his average as the fans continue to linger on the field along with Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. And I think what we're seeing now is a very mature Texas A&M football team. They face some great running backs. They've held the great running backs, but now comes the big time of the season. Absolutely. But they fought some through some adversity this year, you know, changing quarterbacks in midstream. They've had an unbelievable amount of injuries to the running back position. So, yes, they have matured. But that's what you want out of a football team. You, want, you don't want to start off as looking like we're world beaters at the beginning of the year. Obviously, they'd like to be undefeated right now, but they have progressed as this season has gone. And like we talked about, R.C. Slocum is 29-2 and two in November, 30-2 and two after tonight. And that's for a reason, because he and his staff know how to nurture along a football team. Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers from this evening, and you can see exactly what the A&M defense did, especially in the total yards. 124 total yards for Texas A&M. But I think you look at DeMond Parker, he had 14 rushes, only 13 yards. But you know, you look at also the passing game statistic. 81 yards passing, you can't do that. The turnovers kind of balanced out. The average starting position kind of balanced out. But obviously the A&M defense just stifled that Oklahoma offense. But I like what John Blake did tonight. He kept Sills in the game and he gave him and he gave the offense at least a chance to grow from week to week without changing completely. Once again, as we talk talked about last week in the Oklahoma State game. It was a true freshman that really made a difference on the offensive side for Texas A&M. Jamar Toombs, once again, he keeps the feet going. He gets the 260 pounds moving forward. Can't say enough good things about this guy. He will be the Big 12 Rookie of the Year, especially on offense. He's got a chance to be an All-American someday here. But what he is, he's a guy that can run over tacklers. You don't see that very much in college because guys that weigh as much as he do are playing linebacker or nose guard somewhere. He's a guy that can run after contact. We call that yak, yards after contact. He does as good a job as anybody in the country right now, even though he's only a freshman, of making tacklers miss and also running right through them. you got to love him because he plays with wonderful passion and enthusiasm. Well, one thing I think that really stood out is if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan is this team has never given up, and that's what we were told, that despite the fact of all the problems and everything that's happened and the controversy surrounding John Blake, the team does not give up, and they have a couple of winnable games. Yes, they do. Baylor and Texas Tech, obviously it's going to be 
a disappointing state season by Oklahoma standards, but the people that are making the decision on John Blake's future have said all along they will determine John Blake's future after the season and to see how they end up. And I'm like you, those are winnable games. Texas A&M, on the other hand, have winnable games, but they're tough games. An excellent Missouri team, and obviously a very much improved Texas team. So A&M has got the tougher haul here. Well, Corby Jones obviously had a great game this afternoon for the Missouri Tigers as they defeated the Colorado Buffaloes despite the turf toe. And, and obviously Texas with Ricky Williams playing well. Major Applewhite, we'll see him next week right here on Fox Sports Net as they take on Texas Tech in Lubbock. But tonight it was all the Texas A&M Aggies as they took care of the Oklahoma Sooners. Pitched the shutout, and it was a good one for Texas A&M. 29-0 is the final score. We'll be back. Rogaine Extra Strength works for four out of five men. What do you mean works? Regrows hair, or at least stops hair loss. My luck, I'll be that fifth guy. Probably not. But here's our guarantee. Give Rogaine Extra Strength an honest chance. You be the judge. It stops hair loss, or regrows hair. More hair, thicker hair, faster. Or we give your money back. Guaranteed. Rogaine Extra Strength works for you, or your money back. Can't lose. Losers. From now on, you do things one way. That's my way. You will not think. Sleep. Eat. Excuse you will not sir. What? There's a Burger King over there. Do we have to eat our burgers your way? No. No, son, it's Burger King. You know. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders. Don't I like extra tomatoes. Did I tell you to think? When you have it your way. It just tastes better. So for Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin saying so long from Kyle Field where the final score is Texas A&M 29, the Oklahoma Sooners nothing. Be sure to join us next week on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday for more exciting action. We will have Tulane versus Army and Texas versus Texas, Texas Tech. Check your local listings for the games in your area. Coming up next, it's the Groundlings. For Artie and Eric, I'm Ron. Good night, everybody.